hangs up. I'm like, I'm like, mom. <laughs> She's like, what? I was like, I, and I went to her office. I was like, okay, I'm about to tell you something, and I need you to listen. And I'm on, like, I'm gonna say it real slow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agent just called me. I'm playing with the Clippers tonight against the Lakers. I need a ride to the airport. She was like, what? And I was like, my agent just called me. <laughs> on today's episode of the Backyard Podcast, we got my dog, I Kenny E. Rebu, who's a Sacramento legend, professional hooper, and a walking inspiration. Today we get to learn more about his journey and how he keeps the mindset of just keep going. You guys in for a good one. Kick back, relax, kick your feet up, and enjoy this next episode. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls all over the world, welcome back to the Backyard Podcast. I am your host, Marcellus Howard, and I am here with a very special guest, my dog, Ike. Irebu, how you doing, man? What's good, what's good? I'm doing good, bro. Man, appreciate, appreciate you for having me. Come on, I appreciate you pulling up. Yes, now, you know, these guests come on here, they're a little humble with the intro, so I'm going to go ahead and give a quick background, man. Um, went to Franklin High School. Well, first of all, I went to Sutter Middle School. Sutter Middle Our School, rivals, sure. you know saying Cheaters. Shout out to Sutter, man. I loved it there. Nah, don't shout out to Sutter. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Sam Brandon, man. We in the trenches. Um, they went to Franklin High School. Yes, sir. Interesting topic. We'll get on that later. Mm-hmm. Then played at Oak Hill. Yes, I did. Played at Washington State. Yes, I did. All four years, right? All four years, yeah. Then you had a stint with the Clippers. I did. Mm-hmm. G League. Mm-hmm. Go Go City in Washington. Yep. Uh, now you're in the Israel. Basket? I was in Israel this last season. Now I just signed to play in Italy, top league in Italy. Oh my gosh, season. we hey, we getting exclusive access over here, sure, man. Boy, sure. signed a top le- top league in Italy. Yeah. But in high school. He was a top 25 player freshman year, right? <laughs> Something like that. Something I like that. Yeah. I remember you on the ESPN 25. Yeah, which, I, yeah. I don't know. The whole rankings in high school was so crazy, but yeah, I was up there uh, my freshman year. Yeah. That's, that's insane. I was like, I haven't seen nobody in the top 25 on ESPN in Sacramento since Josiah? Yeah, Josiah was like the first one around our age. Yeah. Um, I know Chase Tapley, he was, Chase he was up Tapley. there. He was up there too, but... Him and Demarcus Nelson, but they was like a little older, especially Facts. they was older than me for sure. So, um, Josiah was like the one that was around my age that I knew was like uh, really like putting on for the city and stuff like that at man. like a high, extremely high level. Man, jo- man Josiah, that's who I grew up watching. Yeah, um, we all did. He was a garden <laughs> set. You was watching Josiah Turner, man. Come that's on, man. Yeah. Josie T, baby, one of the <laughs> one of the best, if not the best player to come out of Sacramento, talent wise. Yeah, yeah. Not not necessarily accolade wise, but yeah. Talent-wise, there's there nothing like it. For sure. um, but before we get into the the main topics of the day, I see you have a Nigeria jersey across your serious, chest. Serious, serious. So you want to talk about that real quick, what that is? Yeah, man, this is uh, my Just Keep Going Nigerian national team jersey. Okay. Um, You can get it. Go on Just Keep Going on Instagram. Hit the link in the bio, and you can cop one of these, man. Um, You know, people have been asking me for a Nigerian jersey for so long, so yeah. I put them upon myself to... Go and create one and put it out there for the people. We we got a lot more merch coming in. Um, we got some vintage CDs that I'm about to put out pretty soon. That's gonna be fire. Okay. But um, but yeah, man, go uh, go show support and always just keep going. Always just keep going. And and I always harp on being able to own something. For and sure. you're able to own your own brand. Yeah. That is amazing in itself. Appreciate it. And also wanted to just give you your brief flowers. Thank Not you. that people haven't told you already. Um. You know, it's watching you from Sutter to watching how you handle the situation at Franklin mm-hmm. to seeing you go to Oak Hill and, you know, being close with your brother. Yeah. And it's been dope to see your journey as well because some people who have been through what you've been through will fold. Yeah. You thousand, know what I mean? thousand percent, dog. thousand percent. And you've you made it through the fire and yeah. you're, now you're playing top league in Italy. Mm-hmm. That's, that is a blessing in itself, my dog. Appreciate that, fam. Man. Thank you. So I, I kind of don't want to start with Sutter because I, I don't want to talk about Sutter. So forget Sutter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to talk about, I kind of want to dive into the Franklin High School yeah. um, aspect of your basketball journey. Okay. Now, I don't want to get too much into the story because I want you to kind of tee off on it. But for those who don't know, Franklin High School Wildcat, uh, same school my girl went to. Mm-hmm. And the coach over there, right? Yeah. You were... Like I said, you were ESPN Top 25, mm-hmm. and I believe after you came back from the USA initial camp, well, what was the first camp you went to? It was uh, USA 15 and under for their 
for the 15 and under team, something like that. It okay. Was 15, I'm pretty sure it's 15 and under, yeah. So, the team is 16, but one of the two. And you came back, and then you're going into your sophomore year when you came back? Yeah. Right? So, okay, so freshman year, mm-hmm. you guys are really good. Yeah, we were. Right? We were really good my freshman year, yeah. But I want to talk about the sophomore year coming back from the USA camp and, mm-hmm. and why you never went back to the official USA camp. Can can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, man. What happened there, I th- I felt like I played well in that uh, in that setting. It was my first time being in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that don't know, wherever you are watching this podcast, if when you go do something athletic, whether it's football game, basketball game, baseball game, in Colorado, like, and you don't, and you're not from there, yeah, it's different, bro. Like that altitude going to hit you. Ooh. And I wasn't, I wasn't, um. I was prepared, but I wasn't as prepared I would like for that, you mm-hmm. know. So the altitude hit, and it was it was tough. But I still feel like I did solid. But um, I just didn't end up making that team. I was up there with uh, who was up there? Who was I up there with? It was Aaron Gordon was there with me. Yeah. Um, Jaleel Okafor. Uh, Tyus Jones was there. I remember him seeing him. Yeah. Um, my boy Stephen Domingo, he was there. Who Sniper. went to end up on the Cal here? Um. And a few other dudes, but that's that's why I remember being there. But uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a cool experience. I just didn't end up making the team, honestly. So, you not making the team had nothing to do with coach not showing love. Um, well, he didn't really show love uh, initially. You know, like I was mm-hmm. going regardless if he was like <laughs> showing love or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't yeah. really care. Like this USA team growing up. Um, what year is this? This was probably twenty. High school. Had to be like because twenty ten. You're a year above us, so yeah. You know, so that was my freshman year. Yeah. So you're like two, you're like oh nine oh ten. Yeah. So this is right after. This is a few years after seeing the Redeem team and stuff like that. Back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So this was big, bro. So I was like, yo, I'm like, I don't care if I gotta miss a few days of school. Well, like I'm about to go up there and like try to do my thing. Hell yeah. So like, um. Uh, he didn't really want me to go at first, which is kind of weird to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, like, like I, like, I mess around, do my thing, do good. Like this, this is good for everybody. We all eat off this, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So I just ended up going with that. Like, I just, I just went. I really didn't tell nobody. I was like, yeah, I got this USA thing. I'm going. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So then, um, yeah, but that experience was cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so that w- it is what it was. Uh, didn't end up making the team, but still had a great, great time, great experience. So after you didn't make the team, mm-hmm. you came back. Yeah, and I remember, I remember watching a few of those uh, sophomore games. So I was a freshman at Capital, and uh, UC was playing on JV. Mm-hmm. So I was tapped into like the um, what was it called the the game of the week or something on the oh on the oh yeah on the uh, on the cable TV. Uh, on the cable TV. Yeah, so I would yeah. DVR and I would tune into a few of the games. Yeah, and I was watching a game and I'm like. I'm like, why isn't Ike getting 30 plus Bro, minutes a game? Right. Right. So the more I watched, I was like, there's no way that he is not able to start on this team. Right. Crazy. And I wanted to kind of ask you when, when you went through that process of you came from the USA camp mm-hmm. to the high school team, mm-hmm. kind of being one of the best players on our high school team, but not getting the love that you should have got. Did that alter your confidence at all? Yeah. Yeah, it did because, you know, I was real young. But, um, like, like it did and it didn't. Like, mm-hmm. I knew how good I was. Mm-hmm. and I had we a, all knew. Yeah, and, and I, I had a lot of people telling me, and they kind of um, kind of blamed the coach a little bit. And, um, you know, you, you keep doing your thing in practice. Like, yo, I'm about to play. I'm about to play, especially after I kind of had a solid freshman year. Yeah. But um, this just wasn't the case, you know. The coach, he was kind of on some power trip stuff. Like, nah, we doing. He was real old school. We mm-hmm. doing it his way, da da da, whatever. Um, but you know, after kind of going through that and seeing how like what I should be doing, yeah, and stuff like that, I kind of felt like it was time for me to get up out of there. And in 
in, in terms of the power trip and everything, like he want to do things his way. Yeah. Um, I was talking to your teammate Theo. Yeah. And he told me, and Marvin kind of confirmed this, so that yeah. means it must have been generations of the oh, same yeah. thing. This is like this happened for like even before I got there, you know. Okay. Like, and then to. Because I think UC and Marvin were, like, the last ones mm -hmm. I really knew that, like, went through that coach. Yep. So, yeah, this is, we all, like, felt that wrath, bro. And it was just, like, for what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he had all these talented players. That all Goodness lived, gracious. All these talented players all lived five miles, it, like, five miles from each other, bro. It was, like, it was, was, it was destined to, yeah, to be greatness. It, it was, we could have, like, really, like, did something crazy, but. Is it is it true that he made you guys all have the same free throw routine? Yeah. So can you walk me through what the free throw routine was? Man, I, it was so crazy, bro. I don't even remember, bro. Like, I'm trying like some of the <laughs> some of the stuff that went on in Franklin was so wild. I kind of like like blocked that from yeah. my memory bank, yeah. bro. So I just like will forget about it because there'll be times where I'm just like, bro, like. Like, I don't know what it's supposed to go like, but I know it's not supposed to go like this. Bro. Facts, you facts. Know? Like I know it's supposed to be a lot. Easier, a lot smoother. Um, just basketball is supposed to be just you're supposed to enjoy the game yeah. to a certain extent, you know? And mm -hmm. then being there at Franklin, um, when I was there at least, it really wasn't like that. That's crazy, man, because like but you we said, still but we still with that being said, we still did we still did somewhat decent, but we could have done a lot more is what I'm really trying under, to say. Under under a better leadership for sure could yeah, done a lot more. Like yeah. there there's no way y'all don't at least get two Section titles That's what I'm at saying, the bare man. minimum. Yeah, and we got there. We got to the chip. My mm -hmm. freshman year, just ran into Sheldon. That was Darius Nelson's year. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that okay. game, that game was wild. I remember. Too, I think Chooks dunked on Darius. Yeah, Chooks. Yeah, Chooks yeah, had a nasty lob. <laughs> bro, that's that stuff was wild. Um, so then after sophomore year, you leave to go to Oak Hill Academy. Yeah, which is one of the most prestigious schools in basketball history. For the sure. Brandon Jings of the world, the Carmelo Anthony's, mm -hmm. um, etc. When you went there, was it a culture shock? Yeah, for sure, a thousand percent. Because well, that's in Virginia. Virginia, man. right? Okay. It's, yeah, Virginia. It's like it's like eight miles from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But um, like man, I'm a Cali kid. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm used to sun, sunshine all the time. There might be a little rain here and there, but yeah. we're not wearing like winter coats and like that. We gonna throw on a hoodie and like keep it pushing. Yeah. Over there, man. Like first two months and I, and. And mind you, like I'm 16, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Like I'm 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 young, so, um, like, and it was really hard on my parents at this at the same time because my older brother Chooks, he left for college when I left for Oak Hill. Yeah, it was okay. it was hard on everybody because mm -hmm. like two of us leave at the same time because most families it's like okay you got multiple kids, oldest leaves, and a few years after that the second mm -hmm. one and. After that, the third one for us, like we both shipped out at the same time. Damn. It was hard on not just my parents and my mom, but it was hard on uh, UC as well because yeah, he bet. went from being, um, like the third, the third child to like an only child mm -hmm. for a while. So it was hard on everybody. But, um, yeah, for me it was a real culture shock. I had to get used to being in the cold, um, because I'm a person I like to work out early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And I had to walk. The gym was like maybe like a block, a block from where my uh, my dorm was. Mm -hmm. So I had to walk there, which was cool. But when you waking up at five a.m. and it's snowing outside, and you gotta put your coat on and you Gosh, gotta walk through that. Yeah, like yeah, your your love for the game gonna get tested for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Sure. So yeah, it was a culture shock for sure at first. How how'd you get the Oak Hill? Like how'd you how'd you get there? Like, what was the communication like? So, um, after my freshman year at Franklin, I went to, um, what was it? Nike had a top freshman, top okay. sophomore camp or something mm -hmm. like that in St. Louis, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, St. Louis. Uh, where's St. Louis at? St. Louis, uh, Missouri? Missouri. St. Yeah. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, yeah, um, But, um, yeah, so I went there, and Coach Steve Smith, uh, he just retired. Shout out to Coach, Coach Smith. Mm -hmm. Um he was my coach at that camp. Okay. So then I did cool at the camp, and then fast forward, go through my this little sophomore year at Franklin, didn't go well, and then towards the end of the season, I'm starting to see, like, how things are playing out, and um, I told my dad I want to go to a kill. He was like, mm -hmm. all right, let's do it. So then uh, my dad and my trainer kind of contacted uh, 
Oak Hill Academy and Steve Smith, and he would have remembered me from um from the summer before. Yeah. So he was like, oh, yeah, bring him in. So then um I took a visit there. I went up there, talked to Quinn Cook. Uh, so when I was so, up there, so queen. yeah, I met Jordan, who, uh, with Jordan Adams and all them that were on the team already. Uh-huh. And uh, after after that, I was like, yeah, like let's do it. Mm-hmm. So then, um, and the thing that was funny was I think I left on like a, I left on like a Tuesday, mm-hmm. and my parents were like, yo, don't tell nobody, like you're leaving, just, just like people were gonna ask. And they told uh, my brothers too, because Chooks was a senior, UC was a freshman. Like, yo, like if they ask where where Ike is at, like just just say something. Just yeah. don't say, just don't tell everyone he's at Oak Hill. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I leave and I'm gone for like how long am I gone for? I think I'm gone for like three days. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, so I left on um no, I left on a Monday. And I got back on a Thursday. Okay. And my, that whole time, people were like, yo, where's Ike at? Like, we haven't seen Ike. Da, da, da. And then um, they kind, people kind of knew something was up. Like, everyone, like, yeah. from uh, from the coach at Franklin to, uh, to like, some of the teachers, to all my homies and stuff that were on the team, even yeah. my homies that weren't on the team, they was asking. And I was, they weren't saying nothing. So then I come back that Thursday. I got an Oak Hill hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, y'all, I'm out. Catch y'all. I hope y'all do y'all thing next year. But yeah, um, yeah I just I just had to make that move. Now, you know, um, the, 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 Oak Hill, the Oak Hill move is like a power move. Yeah. Because I'm not sure if anybody from Sacramento has ever been to Oak Hill. I don't think so. Now, it, from, from my recent memory. And... You know, we think of okay, like I said, you think of like the big, big names, and then we see someone from Sacramento able to make that same team on that same level. It's kind mm-hmm. of amazing to see that. It kind of it's kind of inspiring because you know Sacramento is a uh, like I said on one of the other podcasts. It's kind of tough to make it out of here. Yeah. So you know, we see Ike and Oak Hill. We like, yeah, man. You know, what I'm saying one of us made it out. You know, we still doing time in the penitentiary. He made it out. You know, what I'm saying he did. Yeah. He did. He got he got out on good time. You know, what I'm saying he did. He did half the time, half the sentence. But it, at Oak Hill, you said you had dorms, so it's kind of like a college setting, right? No, nah, I would even nah? call it, I would even call it a co- in, in some ways, yeah, but the dorms. Yeah, talk about the experience. Uh, experience was experience was wild, man. Um, you know, we was playing basketball literally all day, cause like, cause they were like they had the goal team, which is the team everyone sees, the team I was on, mm-hmm. boom, right. Then they had, like, a, I'm pretty sure it was a red team. Okay. It's kind of like a JV, but they played local. It was like a, it was like a, a B team for varsity. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. They, they played, like, local teams and stuff like that. Then they had, and then we had, like, a JV team. They also had a girls team, too, that was really good. But okay. they, they weren't there my senior year. But, um... But we legit playing like I'm hooping all day. Waking like I said, waking up at five, going to hoop before school. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then you have school, do all that stuff. Then right after school, we got practice. Okay, right. And then right after practice, uh, go back to the dorm, shower, go to dinner, and then right after dinner, like hooping again. Cause the thing was like you on girl team. You got guys on the red team. They trying to. They trying after that. That bump after dinner, like that was a real thing, bro. <laughs> like, like people trying to see like what's good. So you, yeah. you had always had people like coming at you and and trying to get your best shot and stuff like yeah. that. But it was it was fun, bro. Like we was legit hooping like all the time. So like the the people on the red team would try to be getting to that gold team. Sure. So they it's like they was going at you. Yeah, 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 and I was going right back. So like, was there was there like a deal story of when you guys were playing of like a moment where you were like, yeah, these dudes really can't mess with me type type shit. Uh, yeah, there was just one time. Uh, what year was it? I think it was after my junior year. Mm-hmm. I was just going crazy. Like I was, I was really, I was really doing my thing. Yeah. And then um, I remember I drove baseline. I just took off and do John. I seen you do jump with me, but I didn't really. I got up there, I didn't really see him. Like, mm-hmm. I seen him rise, but I just got to a point where he wasn't as high as yeah, I was. Yeah. Type of thing. So then I put it on his head, 
And I remember, like, just shut everything down. Like, just <laughs> everyone. It was after dinner, too. Like, it was like, yeah, we're not playing no more. Like, shut, everyone, the gym yeah, down. shut the gym down. So you, you shut the gym down yeah. after the dinner fades. Yeah, after the dinner fades. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fun, bro. It was lit, for sure. Those that don't know, Ike is um, one of the most athletic people I've, I've, I've met and I've seen. The whole family. You, whole Chooks, athletic, and you yeah. see. So you see would tell me. I would see Ike dunk. I would tell you, Sim, I see Ike dunk, and I'm like, bro, there's no way none of you guys are out jumping him. He's like, bro, Chooks has the highest vert. Easily. And I I never I never seen it live, so I couldn't understand it. Bro, Chooks' Chooks' bounce was so ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. this is why this is one of the things I love. This is one of the highlights for me playing at Flanko was I got to play with Chooks for two years. Right? Yeah, facts. So um I just remember my what was it? I forgot. I'm pretty sure it was my sophomore year. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> Chooks' bounce was, before I tell the story, Chooks' bounce was so crazy that after I stopped playing with Chooks, I, like, it was hard for me to throw lobs to other people. Because <laughs> you're so used to throwing it a certain way. I, I, I throw it and not, it doesn't it doesn't matter where it's at, he's going to go get it. Fact. So then one time, um, we're on defense, the other team shoots it. Um, I think Chooks had contested it. I think it was like on the wing, mm-hmm. and I was on the opposite uh, opposite corner. Chooks contested a jump shot. Rebound went right to me. I take one dribble to, to the free throw line. He's just leaking out. Yeah. I take one dribble, and I see him. And I just I just threw it like, from, from from like from like three quarters court or like half. Three, no, three quarters court Gosh. from the opposite from the opposite. I just he was running. He was sprinting. I just threw it, bro. And I was like, I hope, I hope we go get it. Like, and he just went up. Jumped off two, just put it on the dude's head, and I was like, it was like, it was so crazy that like, sometimes I just be like, in my head, I'm like, man, like that was unbelievable. Yeah. But during the game, it's like you just kind of just like kind of keep it cool, keep mm-hmm. it composure. But in my head, I was like, yo, that was unbelievable. Like I've seen the dunks Chooks was doing at Franklin, bro. It was just like so unreal, bro. It was ridiculous. So like, cause his bounce, his bounce, like slowly kicked in like after his freshman year he started during his freshman year, he started dunking a little bit mm-hmm. his sophomore year he was dunking too but then like his junior and senior year unbelievable it was especially his senior year yeah no nah, bro that was bro uh, uh, it unbelievable was, it was so crazy like, he would he would uh bend the rim sometimes Damn. no no uh just one dribble drops it, boom, just head mm-hmm. out the rim, boom. And he was strong. You Facts. know what I'm saying? So like you really wasn't moving him. And he had the he had the one foot and the two foot. Which is which know? is hard to do. Which is hard, bro. And it's just like and people knew, like, we me and him, Chooks coming on the break. Like, I didn't care. I was just like, all right, the defender jump at me, I'm throwing it. Yeah. I'm throwing it up there. I, like, I really could just, like, fall, like, he running this way, just, like, throw this. and just throw it, bro. In, 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 in the vicinity. In the vicinity. He Gosh. going he going up there, boom, boom. Like, just doesn't matter. That's so, insane. Yeah, so, like, a year or two after that, like, I'm, I remember I was playing some, uh, do you remember the little summer league games he used to have on Atomas High? Yes. Yeah, yes. so I remember I was playing in that. I don't know who I was with. But dude, he could he could dunk. He had some bounce to him, mm-hmm. and um, we were running the lane, and I see it. I see I see the see the opening for it. I threw it, bro. It hit nothing but the backboard, bro. <laughs> the other way. Nothing but the backboard went the other way, and I was just like scratching my head, like, yo, what am I doing? Then I started to like put things in perspective, and I was like, yo, like for the last two years, I've been throwing chooks lobs, literally, and. I mean, you're not gonna find many people at this age with bounce like Chooks. So yeah, I just kind of had to uh, had to get better at that. I had to get used to that for for a little minute. Man, you know, sometimes you take things for granted because not not only you're throwing lobs to your brother, but that's mm-hmm. someone you've grew up with. So your chemistry yeah. is always there, that's just always subconsciously. There. Yeah, that is amazing. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, I, I like that's a that's a moment I I've never got to experience. I don't have any <laughs> brothers, uh, and and we don't. I don't have the extreme lob ability to catch lobs like that. Yeah, but. Kind of going back to Oak Hill real quick, I, I wanted to ask you a question because I, I used to watch this docu series um, with Quinn Cook. Oh, the day in the life. The day man. in the life, Everyone right? Always ask me about that. The yeah, day in yeah. the life. So was the red line thing or like the invisible line thing that true? A, that was a fact. 
So you couldn't cross that line, or else like they would basically yeah, kick you out the school. You, out. you know where you know where it was at. You know where it was at. It's like they told you this, or this is like a known you fact. Kinda, like everybody you just kind of just like they don't really. The faculty they don't tell you that, but mm-hmm. the students they tell you like yo like just don't cross that line, and then you know you start being there for a little while, you start to see it. You start so, to see it. Can you can you elaborate a little bit on what that line crossing like? What 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 exactly we're talking about here? So Oak Hill, for those that don't know, um, Oak Hill is a boys and a girls school. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just think it's a boys school, but that's not true. Oak Hill, there are girls there, um, and um, you know, it's a lot of te- it's a lot, it's just, it's teenagers running high school. Mm-hmm. You know, you they got they got to have something to split the girls and the boys up. You know, you can't have everyone mixed up because yeah. then it's just gonna be bad news. You chaos, know yeah, it's going straight chaos, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, teenagers middle of nowhere. <laughs> nah, you gotta <laughs> we're splitting that up. So yeah. um, so yeah, so you get there and then uh, I remember my visit. Quinn had told me about the imaginary line, and it's like there's like a welcome to Oak Hill sign, mm-hmm. and then right at that. Right, like you literally cut that sign in half, and that's where it's at. So it's literally like boys and girls. Yeah, the girls, but the girls could cross that line to get to like the cafeteria and stuff. Yeah. So like during school and stuff, you're seeing some people like cross the line, but during, um, like non-school hours, activities, yeah. and stuff like that, nah, you seeing that line, you better not cross it. So was it was it a religious school? Yeah, it was a religious school. Yeah, what, what it was, was it? A, it was Christian. It was a Christian school for Christian, sure. Dang, yeah. that's that that's that's kind of crazy to hear because when mm-hmm. I watched it, I said, I said imaginary line. You know, back when I watched it, I was in, not in the right headspace. <coughs> I said, man, if I went there, they wouldn't say nothing to me. No, they they, no, they just got my ass up out of there. Yeah, they send something to everybody. It don't matter who you are. If you're on the gold team, red yeah. team, whatever, they send something to everybody, bro. That's crazy. For sure, for sure. For sure. But I mean, it, it does keep the order, I guess. Yeah, you got to keep that order, man. A bunch of teenagers can't have them going anywhere what? and stuff like that. So, following Oak Hill, college recruitment yeah. happens. Mm-hmm. And you signed to Washington State. But what were the what was your top five schools? Um, Man, honestly... Top five was like USC, Washington State, Ooh. um, Virginia Tech. Mm. Um, that's like that was like my top three right there. Like those are your like heavy three that you. Yeah, those were like the heavy ones that was really on me. The thing about it though, it really came down to Virginia Tech and Washington State because okay. um, I I a part a part of me want to go to USC and Arizona State. Okay, Arizona State was recruiting me, but. That kind of fell off a little bit, mm-hmm. and then um, USC was recruiting me hard too. That was actually the first school to offer me. Wow! And I was really gonna. Um, a lot of me want to go there, but the only thing with that was, oh, I can't forget his name. I'm forgetting his name right now. Um, basically, they fired the coach. Okay. That recruited me. The head yeah. coach that recruited me. They fired him. So then, going into my senior year. They bring in a new head coach, so that was off the table. So yeah. then it was just Washington State and Virginia Tech. And with me being at Oak Hill, like, I could just, like, stay in Virginia, stay on the East Coast. But then a part of me was like, nah, like, um, I'm trying to get back to the West Coast and, like, yeah. playing for my family and stuff like that. And um, that's what I decided to do. So when you made the decision to go to Washington State, mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure you had aspirations of making it to the NBA. For sure. Right? So I'm – does, does that – do. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, for, come on now. You, yeah. You're already in it damn near. We're going to talk about that in a minute. We are. But at that time, you had aspirations of going to the NBA, like every 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 kid does, yeah. going D1 or any any college. Yeah. And making that decision, did did the school matter, or did you think, like, my, my, my play will translate anywhere? Because some people say, like, their play translates anywhere, but some people who don't have the skill set get seen more playing for a bigger conference. Yeah, for me, it was more about, like, like I'm going to make it work wherever I'm at type yeah. of thing. You know, like, it doesn't really, um, like, location is cool, all that stuff. Is, like, it's all good, but mm-hmm. put me in whatever situation. I'm going to try. I'm going to make it work, find out what I got to do, and then yeah. go out there and, and do it, really. Um, So when you when you got there, mm-hmm. people that know Washington State, it's, it's, it's Pullman. Right, Pullman. Pullman. However, you say that damn name, <laughs> damn it. Uh, but my boy Ty just got yeah, back from there, I and he that. said, "Yo, it is snowy. Yeah, it's cold. It is a it is a different type of Washington." See, the thing about that though, 
I wasn't worried about the coke. Cause I had just did that old kill. Okay, yeah. So right. I was like, man, I'm I'm cool with cold, yeah. like whatever to me at this point. And then you got to the, the at the time was it, it was still packed. It was packed twelve. Yeah, packed twelve, packed twelve. I think they became the pack twelve maybe like a year or two before I had got there, but it was packed twelve. Right, because it's packed ten. Yeah, playing in the pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually it's known for like guards. Yeah. So. What what was that like? Because every night you're playing against premier guards at every at pretty much not even just in the pack, just in general at the D one yeah, level. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, you gotta you just, you gotta like be ready because there's some boys, some teams. Mm-hmm. They was they was coming with it. Um, I remember my freshman. Year, I probably played against like one of the most talented college teams ever in Arizona. Freshman year. My freshman year was crazy, bro. Was wait, wait. That was, uh, let me guess. That was TJ McConnell, uh-huh. Tarkan- uh, Tarkanian, uh, Tar- the seven foot, yeah, Tarzuski. Yeah. Tarzuski. Tarzuski. Yeah, yeah. Um, who, uh, was Gabe York there? Yes. Yeah. Gabe York was there. Um, I'm going blank. Uh, I'm going blank on the others. Nick Johnson. Nick Johnson. <laughs> Bunnies Johnson. Shout out Josie T. Aaron Gordon. Gosh, damn! <laughs> Van Ashley, uh, Brandon Ashley, BA. Um, wow, that that team is stacked. Who they have? They have uh, Richard. Holland, oh, Hollis Jefferson. Hollis Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Damn, and they didn't win it all. Nah, bro. BA, Van Ashley, had got hurt against Cal. Like I think this is right before uh, they started the. Um, Right before they started Pac-12, the Pac-12 tournament, yeah. and then he broke his foot. Oh. And but they still ended up making it to the lead eight. But honestly, if Brandon Ashley was healthy, they for sure most likely would have won, bro. So so talk about playing them like that. That bro, that is a talented team. Bro, it was crazy, bro. Like we didn't, we only played them once because the thing is like with them being with it being twelve teams, mm-hmm. you can't play every team twice. So there's only there's only like two teams you play once. Mm-hmm. So um, it was for us that year. It was Arizona State in Arizona, and um, bro, it was it was crazy. First game sold out. Was it in Arizona? Yeah, at Arizona <laughs> game sold out. Felt like a damn party in there. I was like, bro, these lights is bright. Like, yeah, all lights are like all like gyms are bright, but that year Arizona's lights, yeah, they was. It was OD, bro. So, so what could you do in the situation in terms of team wise when you have TJ McConnell coming off pick and roll from Tarzuski, but then you have Aaron Gorin on the lob side? Then, oh wait, and you got Hollis Jefferson, and then you got BA. Yeah. Like, what? What was? What's the game plan going into that game? Man, you better go out there and show out. Like, <laughs> don't matter who they are, but they was just a good team, bro. Like, yeah. But I'm telling you, like, I remember being at the top of the key trying to call a play. Mm-hmm. And them boys just putting their wingspans out like boom. Gosh. And TJ McConnell's guard me and he was cool, but like coming off a of pick and roll, they switching everything. And then you just got Brandon, he just boom, then you got A. G. Boom, then you got Suzuki, <sighs> boom. And I'm just like, bro, like this gotta be illegal. And there was no three in the key. And there's no three college. in the key. And they had Nick run the break the on the wing too. So it was just like it was it was a lot, bro. But um that game Thing is about that game, we couldn't get we couldn't get a bucket for our lives, bro. Yeah. We couldn't get a bucket for our lives. We couldn't like it felt like there was a lid on the rim. They was playing good defense. Yeah. And they just they got us they got us out of there, bro. They got us out of there. So but, I mean everyone gets smacked at some point. So every every it happens to all basketball yeah. players. If you play good enough talent. Yeah, you play good enough. So you're gonna get smacked at some point, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that um that game was that game was wild. That's that's crazy because I, I totally forgot you and AG in the same class. Yeah, bro. So I, I yeah. forgot you were in the Pac-12 when he was there with yeah. everybody. And one thing that's crazy, um, not crazy, but I kind of I ask all the people who come out here basketball wise this mm-hmm. question. It's a two part question. Was there any matchup that you were like, oh, I I struggled with that guy in college? College. Any matchup? Like one person you played and it was like tough matchup. Nah, not really. That's respect. Like I remember, like there's been games when dudes have got hot mm-hmm. and like maybe like scored more and yeah. stuff like that. Okay, talk but, about that then. Um. Oh man, he bro went to. 
What school did he go to? I played against him in the G League too. I'm saying he played so much basketball, man. Bro, he, it was crazy. Um, I forgot. I forgot his name, but he hit. He I hit like maybe like six threes, six or seven threes. Just Damn. like was just firing off, and it, it was cashing. We ended up beating. Him. We ended up winning though. Mm-hmm. We ended up beating him, but he. I think he might have finished with like 28 or something like that. But it, it's never been like. It's never it, it was never a point where it's like yo like you can't do nothing with this dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? You know what? I, I'm on. Uh, hold on. My my junior year, mm-hmm. Andrew Andrew senior night. We're playing, Gosh, we're playing them. at Washington, bro. Like that was tough. Yeah, he. It was like some storybook stuff where he did that night, bro. I'm not <laughs> even. Nah, I'm not. Even, I'm about to tell you, but you're not gonna believe me, bro. <laughs> yeah, let me, yeah, let it's me, really yeah. like Hollywood type of thing, like seeing it, like. You're a senior, you're leading your team. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, they had a great team that year. It yeah. was him, Nigel. Nigel um, was yeah. Wait, no, no, no. Was Nigel? Nigel's the same class as you, I thought. Yeah, no, but he sat out. No, Nigel wasn't there. Nigel wasn't there okay. th- when this happened. So it was him. It wasn't Nigel's was DeJounte. Him, DeJounte Murray. Oh, Keese? Yeah, Keese, yeah. Okay. With Keese. And for, I knew Keese was good, but I didn't know he was like that. He like, turned up yeah, that freshman year. he turned up his Gosh. freshman year. I was like, yeah, I was like, this dude from Sac? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know what? And the thing about going to Oak Hill, like, I miss seeing, like, the growth of, like, other players, like, in the city. That's very you know true. That's like, very I miss true. seeing that. So when I went from Oak Hill to Washington State, mm-hmm. and my junior year, they're talking about uh, Marquise. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Marquise Chris. He's like, where's he from? He's from Sacramento? Yeah. He went to uh Grove. He went to PG? Yeah. State like, state champion. State champ. I was like, what? And then to see the way way he was playing, where he was flying, I was like, whoa. O D. Yeah, I, I had no clue. Yeah. I had no clue. But um but yeah, back to it. Yeah. So Andrew, Andrew senior night, man. Boy dropped fifty. Bro, senior night. 50 is a lot of points, Bro, but in college, in college 50, 50 with 50, the packed paint, 50? 50, 50 ball, bro. Okay, go ahead. Keep That was just, that was the one, that was, I remember thinking, I was one time like, yo, like, we throwing everything out, bro, like, <laughs> still dropping, still, bro, getting to it, bro. Like, getting to it. 50, so, 40 minutes in the college game, so he equivalently scored one point something per minute. For sure. That is absolutely Insane, yeah, bro. So after the game, what what is what is coach talking about in the locker room? Yeah, talking about nothing. <laughs> you know, talking about nothing, bro. I was just like, I was still trying to con. I was like, bro, does this man really just shot fifty in the in the college game, bro? On, senior night on a senior night. Was it like fifty on the dot, or was it like? Yeah, it was fifty on the dot. No, 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 'cause like. Think about it, like fifty one. Fifty one is tough. Fifty having fifty three is cool too. But just like fifty, just five zero, like this. That's just that's tough, bro. Because like literally, like when your people like score fifty, fifty three, fifty four points, they they usually be like, I have fifty. They don't be like, I have fifty four. Exactly. They kind of round yeah, down. Yeah. yeah. But to have fit, fifty, fifty, half bro. a century. I mean, it hurt. It hurt, bro. Because because I'm just like because that year we weren't having a good year. Mm. Um, we were really struggling, and then that was just like, like dagger in the coffin, bro. Like I was like, bro, what? I, I know the crowd was going crazy, stupid, bro. Oh my! And it's it's a rivalry game, and oh so you talking about? Gosh. That's, what that's what I'm trying to tell you. Hollywood, like, like legit. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't write from their side looking at us. You couldn't write a better story, bro. Senior night rivalry game. 50 ball, bro. Last home game. Last home game, bro. 50 ball. That's insane. You know, I, you know after that, I I might have um, asked for bro's fade. Like, like, hey, don't ever disrespect me like that nah, again. Nah, man. You just got <laughs> nah, to. Yeah, you just got to take it for what it is and nah. just keep it pushing, bro. Like, can't do nothing, but you got to respect it. You got to respect Cause, that. Because I, I remember, I remember shit, my senior year. I was like, yeah, like, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. <laughs> <laughs> got to turn up. I gotta bro. do something. Cause, cause in that, and then my senior year, we had we had Washington too at the crib. Okay, so reverse. Okay, night. So I was like, yo, like I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know we finna get this dub. And then it was our first time in like I think eight, ten mm-hmm. years or something like that that Washington State beat um, 
you dub twice in a season or something like that. Oh shit, it's easy. It was, yeah, yeah, so. So did you did you hoop that senior night? Like, did yeah, you I did cool. I think I either had like fourteen, seventeen. It was loud though. It was like a loud. It was like a loud fourteen, seventeen. One no fifty. Yeah, was, no, but those yeah, those loud seventeens for like thirties. Yeah, 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 it was cool. So then, when so kids that are in high school, mm-hmm. they they watch college basketball and sure. and they think scoring twenty points is easy. Yeah. Right. Now me playing uh, JUCO then going to NCAA, I've only scored twenty points twice in my NCAA career because you get, kids 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 don't understand when when game plans come into play, yeah. and and teams know you and and they can scheme and guard and, and of course the paint is packed and mm-hmm. it it ain't that easy to score twenty. It's 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 not that easy to average twenty. It's not very no. few people average twenty yeah. in college. For sure, and it's a lot of people for you. When when you when you got to college, let's let's say let's, let's go to your senior year, My when senior. when you're fully 100 percent comfortable. Like this is like it's been your team for some time now, mm-hmm. and you're getting ready to prepare for the league. Yeah. So, what what are some of the? I've never asked anybody this kind of question actually. What mm-hmm. what are some of the schemes you faced in terms of coming off a screen or guarding a screen? Um, man, I remember my junior year, mm-hmm. right. I was shooting a three at a tremendously high clip. Okay. Like, I was on pace to shoot it better than Claire. Shit. Like, I was, like, I was going crazy sniping it, bro. Mm Because the year before, I didn't, I wasn't really all that great. But then, come to my junior year, I was sniping. Mm -hmm. So, um, they started, it's funny because I started seeing this a lot more now, too. In this last season, I played in Israel. Yeah. But, like, as soon as I come off a ball screen, trap. Mm-hmm. Like don't 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 let Ike come off and try to create. Just trap him. So I had to get the get the ball out quick. Yeah. Or see if I could find the roller really fast or do something. And at first, that kind of um, that kind of messed me up because I really wasn't used to that. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna come off. They're gonna go over under. I'm gonna have a five on four. I'm gonna have an advantage somewhere on the court. Mm-hmm. They go under, stop back, shoot the three or. Come off it again, so they can't go. You can't go on the ball screen twice, type of thing. Facts, so, rule, rule yeah, of thumb, unwritten rule, rule. rule of thumb. So, um, uh, but yeah, when they was trapping, it was it was tough, bro. Um, that was something I faced, and just uh, you said coming off ball or yeah, like ball yeah, screens. so not guarding ball screens, which yeah. I know get harder every level you go up. Yeah, guarding it, um, you really gotta, it's really, you really gotta. Have patience, listen to the big, mm-hmm. to the call, what he's calling. Um, when you kind of like, there's a lot of trust that goes into guarding a ball screen. That's right. Um, the big guy call what direction, biggest thing, what direction it's coming from, mm-hmm. uh, when it's coming. Um, and then you got to take into account is are you really getting hit by the screen or are they slipping the screen? Slipping the screen because mm-hmm. when they get when teams start slipping the screen, it could get kind of tricky because they could call out, call out the ball screen. But as soon as that last second, you what you look for, he could just slip out. Quick. And then if the big who's guard who's guarding it with you isn't ready for that slip, then it, it could be ugly for you quick. You mm-hmm. know. So um, guarding it just be, highest thing. Um, communication has to be at a high level. Yeah. All the time. That's a, that's like the biggest thing that you start to see. Like as you continue to elevate, go through these doubles, is the communication. Yeah. Um. Making sure you're into the ball, forcing the direction. The big wants you to force it. If you're a mm-hmm. team that likes to down or ice on the sidelines to keep it there, yep. make sure you, like like I said, get into the ball and don't let the, the guard come over. Because if you're trying to ice the ball screen and keep it on the sideline, but the guard ends up getting middle, mm-hmm. then it's over with. It's over with. Yeah. Like he, got, he can see the whole floor. He can get into the paint. Yeah. Uh, now you're big because you're getting caught on that ball screen. Cause you you uh, you're supposed to keep him side, but now he's going middle. Yep. Now the big that was guarding the ice, now he has to play two, and then mm-hmm. you're legit playing five on four. And you got the low man; he doesn't know if he has to help on that big. Then if he helps and you hit the corner man, mm-hmm. then it could just get ugly fast. So just communication for sure. And and for those who don't know what an ice screen is, it's pretty much essentially you're getting an on ball screen. Mm-hmm. And as a defender, I like calling ice. But I also loved ice when they called it on me on defense. Yeah. So, like, ice is basically you have – it's like a two-inch situation, usually on the wing, mm-hmm. going going facing the baseline or the sideline. Yeah. And the defender will go ice, so the big is trying to – or he's trying to force it down to the baseline. 
And pretty much your big supposed to, when they call ice, twist the screen, mm -hmm. right? You could do that for sure. Yeah. Right? That's my favorite thing. So I want to ask you, my, my favorite pick and roll situation was ice. Mm -hmm. Only because when I come off of the, the traditional ball screen, I'm usually attacking middle, right? Mm -hmm. And I like attacking the middle, but I love attacking the big, going down that, going downhill off the ice because I'm, I'm, I'm going to split every time. Yeah, you just like, gonna, like you said, get back to the middle. Yeah, you're just going to do something and then because he's going to be – Standing up a little bit. For you know sure. And nine times out of ten, we're like the fastest players on the court. Literally. So, yeah, we have that big flip it. Kind of give him one, two. Really don't play with it too much. Just kind of turn the speed up a little bit. And then you got whatever you want. Pull up, floater, to the cup, kick out, whatever. Anything. And, and a lot of those bigs, I've never played a big where they're able to stay attached on the ice. Yeah. Because the, the big is now flipping it. Mm -hmm. So, like, they're kind of... They're they're trying to adjust as they're calling ice. So it's like you said, you get a one like a one or two quick move. Mine was like a favorite push cross. One, push middle. Mm -hmm. And then if he helps kick, okay. if I see the 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 low man come over, it's just making reads. Mm -hmm. And I, I've watched a lot of high school basketball recently. I, or in the past couple of years. The game has become less pick and roll and more ISO. Yeah. But then you get the college and the pros, it's more pick and roll. And these these kids are lost. Yeah. So when we were in high school at Capitol, we ran a lot of pick and roll. Okay. So it kind of got us ready to play college basketball. Yeah. But a lot of these kids just think it's all ISO play. And 90% 90, 90 of college pros is pick and roll basketball. Yeah. Because you're not going to have time to pound that ball, pound the air that thing, because coach will pull you out quick. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to make your first decision, kind of off that second, third dribble. Like, what are you going to do? You can't just sit yeah. there and just. Yeah, you just got to, at the same time, you, you got to be patient with it. Mm -hmm. Like, you could even, if they ice it, you could even. Drag the big out. Yeah. Because now you got to think, like, with us being uh, point guards, like, usually we're, like, one of the smaller players on the court, right? Facts. So if they, in that situation where you flip, they're going to have to switch. Mm -hmm. right? Have to switch. They're going to have to switch. You could just drag the big out to your five man, or usually it's the five man telling you, go get down on the block. B bury you know? that. <laughs> bury yeah, them. Just bury them in. So right. then it's like, all right. You're a guard who can shoot. You got the big on you. Mm -hmm. Throw it inside. The big guy to respect you. So now you're. So now your five man is versus is has their one. Yep. You know what I'm saying. So you can make it work. So then if you um if they double there, then you know you got the weak side, and then you got an advantage somewhere. You just got to make that read. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff you could do off that. You know, you just got to be patient. And just uh, ex execute whatever it is you see. Facts, man. Patience is huge in, in the game of basketball. Yeah. Ooh, voiced in damn, 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 damn near cracked. Uh, <laughs> and last thing about this uh, topic, because I do want to, I do want to, to transition to something else. Mm -hmm. um, did you? I loved guarding bigs on the switch. Yeah, same. I so I want to ask you that because a lot of people they don't like the switch. Like they try to fight back and get to the guard. I love guarding a big. Because it 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 inevitable. I think I led the team in charges. Yeah, I would the, on the first bump give him a hardest. Psh, he's okay, and then on the second bump, take it. The thing is with um with you being with you being a point guard, <clears throat> guarding the big more likely than not, the refs gonna give you that call all, all the you know time. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna rock with you on that call. Hundred percent. Um, for me, it's like I like guarding people in the post because one like. Most people that are taller than me think they can move me mm. when, they, when they can't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And to keep it a bug, like, most bigs don't have don't have post moves. Low key. <laughs> like, Low key. Keep, it a, keep it a stack. Yeah, yeah. Most bigs don't have post moves. Like, yeah. They're going to just try to hook you right, hook you left. <clears throat> but if you could do a good job of um, when they switch, pushing them out and make them catch the ball further from the basket. Yeah. You did your job. That's you facts. Know what I'm saying so. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. I have I really enjoy like guarding the post stuff like that. Yeah, you know, like so it's cool to me too. Definitely, I I think is it's kind of as a competitor, you you, you love the challenge. Yeah, love that challenge, bro. You know? Love that challenge, cause 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 put me in the post, like I'll I'll put some moves on you. You know, what facts, I'm saying? facts, but facts. Like most, but most, but I'm for guards watching this. If you if you're a guard who um who you know you got some strength mm -hmm. to you, just go ahead and guard that post one time. Cause I promise you, most of these bigs don't got moves like that. 
No, nah, nah, most of these bigs for sure don't got movies like that. I've seen it. I've played against it. And I always say one of the biggest difference from D2, D1 is the bigs. Yeah. Because a lot of bigs in D2 don't got a lot of moves. But mm-hmm. I did play against one guy who, I kid you not, played for Cal Bat. He shot 65% from the field. Yeah. No misses. You gonna have you gonna have some you gonna have some you gonna have some dudes like that man. But I mean that one dude versus all the other ones. Yeah, facts. Yeah, it was it was one it was one move though. Yeah, left hook all day. Couldn't stop. He's six eight six. No, he's actually six ten. Just left hook. We he, he we knew he's gonna left hook us to death. Mm-hmm. So our goal was to double down quick. He's sure. just right right over the top. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, nothing we can do about that. But now back to my other part of the question: mm-hmm. Has there been a time in college where you've like gave somebody the business? Oh yeah. Sure, for sure. Um, Dub, my junior year, I had like 28. And I don't know how many assists I had. I might have like seven or eight assists. Okay. That was lit. Um, Arizona State. At Arizona State, I love playing Arizona State. <laughs> I loved it. Me Why is boy, that? Why is that? Me and Because like, we knew we was, was going to get to it. Yeah, hell yeah. We was going to get to it against Arizona State. So my, um, my senior year, I think I finished with... Cause I would always have like stat lines that were almost triple doubles, but I've missed by like one or two mm-hmm. things. I was mm-hmm. sick about it. Mm-hmm. I would have, I think my junior had, no, my senior had <clears throat> 22 points. Um, I think it was eight assists and like eight rebounds or something like that. That's tough. That's damn, that's damn near tripped up Bro, in college. You should think in college it's uh you get less time than NBA yeah. to get tripped up. Yeah, it, it it was really tough, but like I said, I just knew like whenever we had Arizona State, it was like yeah, we going we going to show up. Help me, that's uh first of all, I've never got the chance to see even Arizona State play in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um, I never got to even go to Wazoo, but I've seen Wazoo play live. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason why I ask that is because as basketball players. I talk to people and they have a, a trouble admitting the the toughest matchups that the, that they faced, or but they'll they'll be easy to talk about when they gave somebody the business, but not talk about when they received it. Pause. Nah. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> no, nah, I mean you always like people are always gonna it's a, we're, people it's competitive, man. Yeah. You got you got to compete, so you always gonna get God just. Just get your look back at the end of the day. You know man. what I'm saying? Like Shh, yeah, you can like yeah, people gonna. Like score twenty and then like there might be someone that scores thirty, you know. Mm-hmm. Hopefully no one no one else sees that fifty ball. But I mean it happened, <laughs> it happened, bro. You it happens, bro. It happened. So, you know, I just I took that, took it to my next year. I was like, all right, finna I gotta get I gotta get my look back. Got gotta get your look back. Yeah. That's that's one thing about basketball that's lovely because you always get the opportunity to get your lick back. Yeah, sure. In most cases. Yeah, in most cases, you know. So Now, now there's this story. Um, not many people know. My junior year, going into my senior year, I think. Um, no, going into junior year. Someone's in your class, Jabari Bird. Jabari Bird, my boy. Right? We're at Cal. We're at Cal Berkeley playing in the Cal Berkeley High School Tournament. I think we're like in the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. And he flies back from the USA camp. He got cut. Mm. So I'm talking to people on Salesian. They're like, yeah, he's he's coming out. He's just watching. He's not playing, right? He saw that that they were playing Capital Christian. I literally seen him go, oh, bet, go put his shoes on. He, he, had, he, had, he had some shoes that he brought from uh, Colorado and put them on and started getting the warm blinds. I said, I thought bro wasn't playing. And then they're like, yeah, I guess he's pissed for not making a team. So I said, man, bump that. We're going to go at this nigga. Bro, when I say that was the loudest 30 I've ever received because it wasn't just 30 points. There was one highlight on my boy Justice. Yeah, I'm, tell- I'm telling this story because, yeah, people got to hear this. It was, a, it was a play where someone dribbled. It was Mario Dunn. Mario. Bro. Rio was cold. Tough, bro. Bruh. So oh. Mario Dunn is dribbling baseline. Baseline. Throws the ball over the over the backboard for a lob, and Justice sitting there like, "Oh, I'm gonna get it." Jabari Bird puts nuts on top of his head and sits on his shoulders, dunks it. Boom! They didn't count it because they said it was out of bounds. But in that moment, I said, "Oh, that's that's the difference, right?" So after I seen that, I'm like, "Damn, okay." So I'm talking to Mario mid game, and I'm like, first of all, y'all being disrespectful right now." Throwing the ball over the backboard, he's like, "Yo, you know, man, you know, we we got to show you how it's done." So after that dunk. 
he had five more and then had 30. And then this is this is the worst part. We lose that game and <laughs> we go sit in the stands to watch them play the next game. He is sitting in the like the team bleachers with his shoes off and in oh, yeah. a sweatsuit. Oh, he just so, want that smoke for y'all. He said, I want that Capital Christian smoke, and that's it. Because this is the time we had it was me, DJ, Malik Pope was supposed to go to Capital at this time, mm-hmm. Nephi, UC Justice. And he said, Yeah, I want that problem. And then after that game, literally sat back in the bleachers and didn't play. I said, I said, wait a minute. Yeah. I was like, no, he, he wanted that capital smoke. For those that don't know about my boy Barry Bird, man. Go look him up on YouTube, watch his YFs. And I, me and UC was just watching these not too long ago. And Barry is like, Barry, like, no, no funny, no funny stuff. He was really on some Kobe stuff. Like, he was, he was good. Yeah. Dude. Like, you look, in a, you look at his frame. He was like, at that time, he was like 6'6, six, six, skinny, mm-hmm. extremely bouncy, mm-hmm. fluid j- jump shot, had the one, one, two dribble pull up, jab, pump yep. fake, one dribble pull up, taking it to the rack. Athletic finishes, up and unders, all of that. Barry was really like one of the ones for real, for real, bro. Easy. Yeah, he, he was for sure. Especially especially in the Yaf era because... Yeah, that even, YF stuff was crazy. Even you had a Yaf mixtape. Yeah. So it's like... That was the goal as a kid to get to get a Yaf mixtape. Right. We got that mixtape. What was the like... What what was your initial response and reaction? Um, So I have... I think I have two. I'm pretty sure I have two YF ones of like just just me. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. My first one, when it dropped, I was like in awe. Like I was like, wow, like facts. You type my name in, like this was gonna pop up, and it was yeah. t- it was t- it was tough, bro. I haven't mm. I don't I haven't watched it in a while. Yeah, but I just remember that feeling of, um, like yeah, like I like I'm I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it was. No, nah, it's crazy. Bro, no cause, fact, though. Cause like nowadays, like any kid could get a mixtape, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. but back then you really had to show out, and bro had to Travis, yeah, or like Travis and one of his dudes had to um had to follow you around and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So like, so like you see Trap pull up to the game, it's like it's time to go, bro. You, you <laughs> want this mix? You got it. You got to make it happen. Facts. So then, um, so the first one. Fire, bro! Like, yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe. I probably watched like a thousand times in the span of like four or five days. Easy, me. easily, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And then the one he made me going into my senior year that summer, mm-hmm. that was the one. I think that one might have like three hundred, four hundred thousand views. I'm mm-hmm. not really sure, but that one was just like, like that was just so fire, bro! I, I, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, be, yeah. I really honestly couldn't believe it. Um. Because, like, that summer was just crazy. Like, AG was getting his. Fact. Barry was getting his. And um, all these other dudes. And it was, like, a select few. Uh, DA was getting his. Um, and, you know, this is the summer after uh, the Soldiers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, with Barry Brown, Josiah, Kiwi, Nick, Kyle Wilcher, um, Chooks, all yeah. them. Like, they was all, like, they all got mixes. And it was all tough. Facts. So like I was like, yo, like I need one, I need one, and then Trav like he made me that, and um that was the summer joint, the summer joint, yeah. yeah. I'll be forever, for, forever grateful for that, cause that really just like when that dropped, bro, like it was it was ridiculous. But because because back then when when Yaf would drop, who who mixtape would drop, Balls Life would drop mixtapes, kids were getting scholarship offers off these videos. I, I you know what now that you say that, bro, it was like the way. Getting a mixtape felt back then. It was like, like scholarship, and then right. I'm talking about like legit <laughs> right under that was getting getting a mixtape. Right? Yeah. Because nowadays you have so many so many different outlets for mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Like, like overtime. Um, yep. My dude down in L.A. Uh, Beach City. Hoops, Beach City. Um, who we got out here in we, Sac? We, we got, got a uh, simply simply basketball. Simply basketball. We got um. For, I mean, we got. Over overall, we got Mars Real, uh, yeah. City League hoops. It's all that you got. So you know? many different outlets back then. It was hoop mixtape, YAF, 
and uh, Ball's, Ball's Life. Life. That's it. And then For the most part, Mars Reels was cool. Too. Mars Reels was more like a DC thing. Yep. And then City of the Hoops was like just coming up. Yeah. Um. And then you, you forgetting we got GBWE TV. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Don't can't forget. Can't, can't forget that. Can't, can't forget the get buckets with these television. Can't forget that, bro. But, but nah, the 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 that was a fact. Because people used to say like the scholarship, and then he'd be like, bro, I need right, a mixtape. Right, you need a mixtape. You want that scholar? Yeah. Like, like, honestly, I'm just thinking of I'm just thinking of like a 16, 17 year old. Like, you want that scholarship for sure. Hundred percent. That's great. But like I really want this mixtape, man. Like Whoa. you know what I'm saying? Like that just type my name in on YouTube and boom. And the mixtape pop up. Come on, bro. Yaf, Yaf was before his time because yeah. I think he had the Yaf class, I think, one or two times. If if Trav kept going, man, he would be a mogul in this hoop mixtape no, world because he would have access to everything. Just because his work was top tier, his network was top tier, everybody knew what Trav looked like when he walked with the backpack with the camera. With the camera. And then everybody knew what um, Lincoln, I mean, um, not Jason. Yeah, yeah. Jason. Oh, Jason and Lincoln. Yeah, Jason, both Lincoln, yeah. George. Yeah. Um, and it was, just, it, it was the, the you, you guys weren't alive to see, if you guys weren't alive to see the hoop mixtape culture, basketball culture, it was purely one of the best eras it was crazy, in basketball. Because it was, it was before the social media era. Yeah, because you, I, like you, as a hooper, like, I remember, like, Whenever I come back from school, yeah. like hoop mixtape and like YF, uh, those were my like home pages. Yes, like, I used yes. to like, refresh every time just to see like yo who like who got a mix today, who who's dropping this week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. there used to be like suspense, like did a little countdown. Yo, I got the like the way Trav did mine was like yo, I'm dropping the best PG on the West Coast mixtape tonight. Boom, facts. He he tweeted that. Yeah, he tweeted yes. it. Said, boom, and I'm just like. I was like, yo, try to drop my stuff today, bro. I'm, I'm lit, bro. Because he wouldn't yeah. tell you when he's going to drop it. Nah, he wouldn't tell you. He Ooh. he just tell, he just be like, yo, like, I'm working on it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's in the works, da, da, da. You'd be like, all right, and just hope, like, all right, that's sometime in the near future he uh-huh. drop it. And then he just, then he drop it. I remember there was nothing, like, um, when he dropped oh, AGs. I don't know what year it was. Right. I think it was going. 16-year-old one. I think that the, one that was, was the very like the first best one. Sixteen year old in the world. Right? He had a little tank top on. In the str- I think it was he was in the street walking in the street. Bro. It was like Aaron. Uh, yeah, did a little Bro. intro. That Bro. right there, I think that was a Superman theme song. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. It wasn't. It was the same one where at the end it had him like doing hella different like boom 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 boom, and then he caught the reverse. Was it that one? I think. I think the one I'm thinking of was the between the legs psh, and then the salute. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that was a summer one or if that was a 16-year-old. But either way, the first Aaron Gordon mixtape when he got introduced to the world, because we all knew, we've seen Aaron Gordon play. Yeah. But when the world got a hold of that mixtape, oh, my with. gosh. It was over with, bro. And you know who was right under him in terms of legendary mixtapes, in terms of people knowing who a household name was Trevor Dunbar. Trevy D. Trev D. Yeah. And you got a chance to play with him at Washington yeah, State. Yeah, Interesting I guy, man. I, I plan on getting him. For sure. <laughs> That's my dude, bro. That's my boy. Oh, yeah. I got to get him on the pod soon, man. Oh, yeah, but yeah, got to get that one. Not to talk too much on that story because I want him to kind of tell that story because yeah, I, I, yeah. I kind of know a little of the backstory of what happened. You got to hear from. I got. I got to hear from the. You, I got to hear sure. from him. But um, yeah, yeah. Last thing on that mixtape era, it was my my go tos were Dominic Artist, yeah. the summer mixtape. Yeah, the dun, dun, dun. That one, mm-hmm. I watched the Aaron Gordon. Uh, mm-hmm. pretty much all three. And then, you know what I'm saying, can't go wrong with the Kill Cars. The Kill Cars was cool. Kill you didn't like the Kill Cars? Cool. I, I didn't not like it. I thought it was cool, but my top. Yeah, what's your top? Give me your top five mixtapes. Top five mixtapes? Let's hear it. John Wall, number one. Easy money. Gosh. I was just on, I was legit <laughs> just on my phone on Instagram. Because mm-hmm. I think it was Austin for his birthday, like either yesterday or oh, the day before. my God. It was like, yo, does he have the best mixtape? And I was like, nah, he got the second, though. For me, at least, it's John Wall, number one. Mm-hmm. Austin Rivers, number two. Easy. And then um, Josiah, yes, going into his senior year that summer. That was like a summer mixtape. Yep. Yeah, yeah, summer yep. mixtape. Stupid. Um, <laughs> that was ridiculous. And then number four, number four, I would have to say, um, Rod, Bobbit, Roderick Bobbit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He went to he went to U.S. No. 
I think he went to USF. No, no, no. He went to Rolling. No, he went to Something Hills National Juco. But yeah. he went to Cashel Valley. Yeah. Yes. No, 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 no. No, no, not right, not Bobby. Uh, oh, my gosh. Why am I forgetting all these names right now? So many of them. It's so many, bro. Was he was he a Bay Area? Yeah, it was a Bay dude. Jabari Brown? Nah, I, nah, nah. Uh, nah. Kiwi? Definitely, nah, not Kiwi. I remember that's Juan Anderson. My guy, not Juan. He was a guard. Guard in the Bay. He did, uh, like this, he did like a bounce and then like did the Brandon Jennings thing. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Oh my jeez. Oh my jeez. Oh. I want to say he's from like the Stockton. Stockton. You're talking about not not Leo Smith. Nah, you're on the right track, though. You're oh. on the right track, though. Oh, my gosh. This... Who was that? We're going we gonna to get the name for y'all later. Yeah, but fact. that one was four, okay. and then fifth was probably uh, the same DA one that you saw. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, that, yeah. that, that, that's a power five right there. Yeah. I, I got a few I'm going to throw into there. So, in no order, I got the John Wall, Austin Rivers, yeah. Ryan Harrow. I, think I played with Ryan. Where? In France. Wait, recently? Yeah, uh, last year. So I, I was in France. I was in France for like four or five months, and huh? we, we was teammates. Was like, was that dope to play? Yeah, it was dope. Cause the thing was, for the first three months I was there, he was hurt. Okay. So then, like, so we would talk here and there. And then we started playing. We started. We was on the court at the same time. And we started talking, and, mm-hmm. I, and I remember we was try. We was on the on the train one time going to an away game, and um. I just had to ask him. I was like, "Hey, bro, like, what was it like when you on mixtape drop? Like, cause you really got like probably like top ten, like a top ten mixtape. <laughs> Easy. Of all time. Like, what's the, what was it like? He was like, "Bro, like, like it was it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, he was, he said like his life kind of changed. Like everyone hitting us up, hitting him up, um, just blowing up his phone. Mm-hmm. Like he was that good. Cause I'm pretty sure, cause he was in Atlanta at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah, like, yeah. He, was like yeah. he was he was that guy for like." For a while, just because of that one mixtape, and I remember after the after that mixtape, I would then watch his Day in the Life series. Yeah. Like that led me to really follow Ryan Hero. I wanted to rock number twelve because Ryan Hero. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Ryan, crazy yeah. that you get to play with him. Yeah, I got to play. He's a cool dude, bro. He's yeah, a cool dude. And he still play. He still got the bar. Still plays like real methodical like that. And you know? he's tough. Man, if if he had went to the right school, I feel like he would still. Yeah. He would de- he would definitely be in the states right now. For sure, for sure. But I think you know, fit and opportunity is everything. Especially in fact. basketball. Yeah, especially you know? in basketball. That's a fact. Um, so I got I got John Ball, Austin Rivers, Ryan Harrows. I gotta throw a kill car in there because that's yeah. just what a I kill grew car up was watching. Tough. Yeah, kill car was tough. And then that fifth one is always a tie for me between A. G. and Trev D. Just because I, I played Trevor and I've grown up with Trevor, so it's like I kinda bias to that. But man, Trev was that was that was the first person to be honest where I seen his mixtape and I honestly said, Oh, it's possible. Yeah, like someone in my class, and that's and that's the thing that your favorite mixtapes do for you. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. they just kind of inspire you in a way. That's what um, Josiah's mixtape did for me. <sighs> Josiah, all his mixtapes. That's what it did for me. Yeah, that's what watching guys in my age, like Ag and Jabari Bird. That's what it did for me. Mm-hmm. So um, when you have there's when you have those mixtapes that resonate you and kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. inspire you in a way, it's for sure gonna be up there. That's, that's actually a good point, man, because yeah. the people, when you resonate with something, you tend to motivate to be that exactly. or better than what you're resonating with. Sure, yeah. um, now, I, I kind of want to fast forward a little bit. After college, you, you did you enter your name in the NBA draft? After college, yeah, I did. I entered actually in my junior year. Okay. <clears throat> and then I got feedback from uh, from some teams. Okay. Like, yo, yo, he needs to work on this. And so right now, I was like, all right, cool. So going to my senior year. Uh, do good, and then um, I remember I had a what month was it? I think it was in February. Mm-hmm. I had like a four to five game span. I was just going crazy. Yeah, I was yeah. Like I for sure I averaged like like twenty one points, like seven assists, seven rebounds. Tough. I was going a little stupid, yeah. and then um, and then uh, I signed. And then the agency that I was signing after my senior year, we had played USC. During, we have made a LA trip, okay, and they because they were watching one of my teammates, but I was like going, like I was going crazy. So they're like, "Yo, like we want to bring him in too." So mm-hmm. then they started talking to me, and I ended up signing with them after my senior year into the draft, um, of course. And um, I f- got flew out to LA, had me in Santa Monica High School. 
Okay. Um, and then have my uh, wait, wait, what, what agency is this with? Huh? What agency is this Wasserman? with? Wasserman. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then um, we had not the draft. Uh, pro day. Pro day. Pro day. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just forgetting stuff. Today. Yeah, no, you yeah, good. Pro day. Yeah. So I had my pro day, and it was ridiculous, bro. Like when I say like the whole league was there. Gosh. Like legit, the whole like everyone of a who's who outside of the players. Mm-hmm. Just like front office guys and like legends, anyone that's a who's who was there, bro. Like, who was in your workout? In my workout, it was me, Nigel Williams Goss, okay. and uh, me, Nigel Williams Goss, LJ Rose, and then there's this other dude too, I forgot his name. Okay, but um, we all had like assignments in our pro day, okay? Like, so Nigel, yeah, elaborate, yeah. So, Nigel was um, like, all right, so they wanted Nigel to be vocal. You know, like, you know, always talk, da, 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 like, okay. show you like a leadership school, boom. You know, they wanted me, like, I could be as athletic as possible. Like, just jump, like, jump through the roof, mm-hmm. do whatever you got to do. I was like, all right, boom. Then LJ was like, be Mr. Fundamental. Like, always hit just, like, hit as many spot ups as you can and yeah. shoot the floaters, pull up J's, just show off your form and stuff like that. So, like, as we're gearing up, so say, like, our pro day is on Friday. Mm-hmm. Like, we're doing, we're going through our routine, our workout on Monday. Okay. So, we're doing this, like, tw- I think it was, like. Oh, so it's kind of like a rehearsal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. This, Interesting. This is a big rehearsal, bro. Big yeah. rehearsal. So, then, we're going through it. And um, so, I'm pretty sure Friday comes along. And we had the second. No. Was it the second or first? We had, no, we had the first. Like pro day workout for our group, mm-hmm. not our group, but the guys of that day who are all doing the pro day. We had this, we had the first one. Okay. So then we go, um, we go down to the weight room. We're, um, we're lifting, not lifting, we're stretching and stuff. Yeah. Getting ready. And I can see on guys' faces, everyone's just like a tad bit nervous, right? Mm-hmm. So then, um, guys are coming down, say, like, "Hey, yo, hey, yo, yo, Magic Johnson's here." Magic Johnson? Hey, yo, Magic Johnson said, hey, yo, hey, yo, yo, Jerry West is here. Yo, that's freaking crazy. Hey, yo, hey, yo, like, Rob Palinka's here. Then I saw uh, Spolster up there. What? Um, Well, like, I uh, saw Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson was there. <clears throat> it was Bruh. just, bro, I'm telling you, it was unbelievable, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was really, like... Like, I was just looking around. I was like, bro, these are all the faces I've seen since I was a kid on TV. Facts, facts. Like, in the gym, they about to watch me. I was like, say less, bro. Like, say less. That So that that right there either turns people into... You're going to... You, yeah, you're like, going to turn it up or you're going to... Literally, you gonna, it's, it's either do or don't at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah. Because, and for me, I've always been the type of person, like, I really don't need much. Hell to yeah, turn hell it on. yeah. I kind of just... Go take things for what it is, and like, yo, yeah, like I'm about to show out, like I'm always trying to show out. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So then, um, and then yeah, when I saw that, I was like, nah, this is crazy. So, like I like legit, like my vert, my vert was already high mm-hmm. for sure, like a forty. But on that day, it was probably like a four forty five. <laughs> he definitely had that extra, like yeah, I had that extra boost. But I was like, I was doing dunks like I really like just never do, bro. Like mm-hmm. I'm talking about like. Off the one foot, because usually when I was gonna jump off one, I like to bring it back with the one, but I don't like fully extend. I mm-hmm. just kind of go off the rim, swipe it in. But then, like I was like brawn and stuff. Like I'm talking about Damn. off two feet, bringing it back. Like yeah, go wherever. I'm gonna go up there and catch it, head at the rim, huh, just screaming. Huh. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna thanks. feel. They're gonna feel me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and then everyone did their part. Like Nigel, he uh, he did a good job. He was being like extremely vocal. Um, LJ, mm-hmm. he just, I, like, we all, like, shot it well, and I shot it extremely well, because back then, like, I, I tell people this, because they tell, they look at my form now, and tell, like, I've improved on it a lot, mm-hmm. and I'll tell them, like, back then, like, I was, like, a shot maker, I yeah. really wasn't, like, a shooter, you yeah. know, like, I could, like, like, we need a bucket, like, I could just make something happen and get it, get it, get it, get a bucket, yeah, but it fact. wasn't as consistent as I like to be, Yeah, but that day, I wasn't missing yeah. I wasn't missing, bro. Like, spot us, boom. Like, it just looked crazy. And mm-hmm. then I just remember, like, I dunk and, and I yell, ah. And then you just hear, whoosh. Like, you would just, people, like, Ooh, you just okay, hear, like, okay, you hear people, okay. the, you just hear people, like, just saying stuff whispering. in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, 
Um, that was pretty cool. I had a, everyone did extremely well that day. My college coach, Coach Kent, he was there, and he came up to me and was like, "Ike, I've never seen you like shoot that well before, or yeah. jump that high before. Oh my gosh!" Like, and he coached me for three years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, you just that was amazing. And I was like, appreciate it. And then my agent at the time came up to me and was like, "Yo, like, like you did, you did well today. Like, you earned, you earned yourself like a few um, NBA workouts and stuff like that." So it was, it was crazy, bro. It was, um, it was really cool. What what NBA workouts did you get from that? Man, I got a. My first one was with the Jazz. Okay, that was, that was crazy because and the, not not crazy because it was the Jazz, which mm-hmm. was great, but how it all happened. So, yeah. I'm legit. Um, so I it's like a regular day. I'm in Santa Monica and I'm like, yo, like I feel like doing some yoga today. I find like a local um yoga mm-hmm. studio. I go there. I'm doing my yoga. Um, everything's cool. And then um one the instruct one of the people at the front desk comes up to me and was like, Hey Ike. Um oh no, they come up to me and was like, Hey, is anyone named Ike in here? I was like, Yes, yeah, me. He's like, Someone's on the phone for you at the front desk. I was like, What the fuck? Okay. In Utah. No, no, no. This is in LA. This is oh, in in, okay, 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 okay. Got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. So this is this was like maybe like two to three days after the pro day. Got you. So then they're in, um yeah, so in Santa Monica and um they Person. call the yoga spot. The, so listen. Okay. So listen. So, uh, person's called the yoga spot, the yoga studio at the front desk. So I pull up, and uh, they're like, it's my agent okay. on the front desk's phone. It's like, Ike, yo, you have a workout with the Jazz. There's only one flight from LAX to um to Santa Monica tonight because it was this was at like six p.m. Mm-hmm. You know, there's only one more flight to to Utah. Can you um? I need you to. Like, I I need you to get to the airport. And I was like, yo, I don't have any shoes. I'm mm-hmm. um, low-key sweating. Like, like, bro, I don't have anything. He's like, yo, like, look, they're going to take care of you. When you get there, they're going to give you shoes. They're going to give you um, clothes, all that stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, all right, like, whatever. Like, this how I got, this how it has to be. Like, yeah, whatever, yeah. bro. Like, I've been in crazy situations before. I'm used to it by now. So, um, so... My agent gets me a Uber from the yoga studio to LAX. Mm-hmm. They got me on. They got me on a flight to Utah. Um, I get in there. It was cool. They had me in a real nice suite. I think it was one of the best suites in Utah or something like okay, that. Okay. I don't know what hotel it was, but it was good. It was a good one. And um, I get there. I get to my Utah workout, and it was cool. It was it was a good workout. Um, who else was there? Uh, Dwayne Bacon was there. Okay. Um. PG that played with DJ at Michigan. Uh, um, you talking about um, Derek Walton? Yeah, Walton was there. Yeah, Walton. Um, I want to say Kennedy Meeks was there. I'm not really sure. From, from uh, UNC. Yeah, he okay. was, but he was at my Denver workout later. But yeah, so that Utah workout was cool. But um, but I ended up working out for Utah, Sacramento Kings. Okay, um, hometown. Hometown. I was cool. Uh. Utah, Sacramento Kings, the Knicks, yeah. Brooklyn Nets, Damn. Memphis, and Denver. Yeah. It, but the thing about people that don't know about these like NBA workouts is like like you're just flying all over the place. Yeah. Like it's not like in the se- like a real NBA season where you like like you kinda like have some time to rest. Mm-hmm. In between, mm-hmm. I know everything's like fast paced, but this was like ridiculous. Like, yeah, like I'm talking about like because if you if you have a workout with the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks, you just stay in New York. Stay in New York. Mine was kind of different. Like I was like I'll go to like I'll fly to New York, work out with the Knicks, mm-hmm. fly back, then two days later, fly back. Oh my work out with gosh. The Nets, fly back, and then maybe like a day or two after that, work out with the Kings. Come, go, I mean, it's at the crib, so go back to where I was staying at. Then maybe a day or two after that, go fly to Memphis. Uh, it was. I just remember like being like during during that time, I was just like, yo, I don't really know where I'm at. Yeah. Um, I'm. I was just trying to ca- get as much sleep as I can, nice. get ready for these workouts. But it was just a lot of just on the go. I was just like, whoa. But um, it's That's just different. it was just something um you just had to go through. But yeah, yeah it was it was cool. So. Wow, first of all, 
yeah, that's that's amazing because flying, putting miles on your body is a lot, and then going to have to work out and perform at the highest level is a yeah. lot too. And and there's one team you didn't mention was the Clippers. Yeah. So you didn't get a workout with the Clippers. No, I did not work out with the Clippers, no. So we're going to get into this story. I know the story. I've yeah. talked to you about it. So you didn't work out for the Clippers, mm -hmm. but they pulled you up to play in the preseason game. Mm -hmm. Talk about that exact story because they, they, people need to hear this story, man. This is an amazing I, story. I told it like once or twice. But um, I'm gonna give you like the full. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, they need the full breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> I need the full breakdown. Let me get some water real quick. Yeah, you know, go ahead, man. Do your thing, cause like I said, when he when he told me the story, you guys, I was um, it, it was kind of crazy, cause I turned the TV on and I'm like, I was like, wait, I, I you see, like, bro, I was like, you see the playing? He's like, yeah, bro, like, and I see you on TV with the Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, um, who else on the team at the time? CP? No. No, CP. Not CP. It was um. Austin Rivers was there. Austin Rivers was there. Pat Bell was there. Pat Bev. Um, Lou, uh, Will. Lou Will. Yeah, Lou Will cool. Show me love. Mm -hmm. Was um, Kawhi there at that time? No, nah, no, nah, he, nah, he was. He, he was in freaking yeah. Toronto. He, nah, he might have been. Nah, no, he, he was, was in San Antonio. He's in San Antonio. Yeah. This is twenty what? Twenty seventeen. Seventeen. This is twenty seventeen. Okay, so go ahead, man. Tee off on the story, man. Yeah. Get so, some water myself. <clears throat> so I'm chilling, bro. Uh, I work out. So back then, my schedule was yoga from 7 to 8. Okay. Then go get on the court at 9, and then I'm probably back at the crib by like, like 10, 45, 11 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about 11 o'clock. I'm back at the crib, just finished my two workouts, and so I'm, I'm chilling for the day. Yeah. And... um. I'm just on the couch. Literally Theo, my boy Theo is at my crib too while this happened. We're literally on my couch mm -hmm. and we're watching the Clippers play the Kings. Just because they had just played maybe like a day, like the day before or something like that. Okay. And it was like one in preseason was coming to an end. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my phone rings. It's my agent. And I was like, yo, what's good? He's like, yo, Ike, how uh, fast, can you, fast can you get to the airport? And by this time, I'm thinking... I, I'm thinking, okay, like anything can happen here because he asked me the same thing with when I went to go work out with the Jazz. You know yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, all right, he said, yo, I, how fast can you get to the airport? I was like, uh, maybe like, like if we're really like speeding, like 20 minutes, but like 30 for real. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, I, I need you to pack a bag and get to the airport. You're going to, um, you're going to play for, with the Clippers tonight oh, against the Lakers. Tonight? Yeah, tonight against okay. the Lakers. Mind you, it's like 11 o'clock. Okay. So I was it's 11 a.m. Like, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Gotcha. Yeah, it's 11 a.m. And I'm just like, what? He's like, pack a bag <laughs> and get to the airport. Yeah. You're playing with the Clippers uh, against the Lakers tonight. I was just like, bet. Yeah. Like, All right. Like, it's cool. Hung, hangs up. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, mom. <laughs> Can I say with my parents outside? I was like, mom. Yeah. And, and luckily, my mom worked from home. Because mm -hmm. if she didn't, I don't know how. I would have figured it out, but I don't know how I would have got there. So I'm like, mom, mom. She's like, what? I was like, I, and I went to her office. I was like, okay, I'm about to tell you something, and I need you to listen. And I'm on, like, I'm going to say it real slow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Agent just called me. I'm playing with the Clippers tonight. Against the Lakers, I need a ride to the airport. She was like, what? And I was like, my agent just called me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I play with the Clippers tonight against the Lakers. I need a ride to the airport. I'm going upstairs. I will be back down. Five, I need to pack my bag. I, I'll be back down in the legit, like, three to five minutes. Like, I need a ride. She was like, I got you. I was like, bet. So then um, I go upstairs. Just, I don't even look. I just... I just made sure I had my shoes in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. whatever. And he's like, mm -hmm. and my agent told me we would like wear something that's like semi nice what a, for like the little tunnel thing. Yeah. Back then, the little tunnel walks just started like popping off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I was like, whatever, bro. Like, I don't care. So I had on a nice little shirt and, and stuff. And I get to the airport. My mom's like, all right, go do your thing. Good luck. Love you. Da, da, da. I was like, right, cool. Love you too. Boom. Get to the airport. Get through security, bro. Mm -hmm. And get to um get to the gate, and the gate one to my left mm -hmm. was going to uh was going to LAX. Gate two was going to uh 
It was gonna be in L.A., but it was a small airport. I think either it was, Santa Monica, yeah, Orange Santa County, Monica. it was one or of the Long Beach. I think I think it was Orange County. Right? Okay, pretty sure it was Orange County. So, um, both are booked. I don't even know how I got through security. No, I was on the LAX flight, mm. but I had to have someone um, leave. Like, not show up for yeah. me to get on the flight because it was already full. Yeah. So I called my agent. I was like, yo, the LAX flight's already full. Is there, like, but this next flight next to me is leaving to um to Orange County. Can I get that one? He's like, no, you can't get that one. You won't make it to the game in town. It's like, he's he's like, yo, like, beg him to tell him the situation, like, mm-hmm. get on the flight. So I went up to the front desk, and I told the lady, I was just like, yo, like, <laughs> yo, my agent called me. I'm playing against the Lakers tonight with the Clippers. Yeah. Is there any wacky on the slide? And she was like, what? And I was like, I'm <laughs> playing with the Clippers against the Lakers tonight. I need your help. Can I get on the slide? Uh-huh. And then um, ended up getting on the flight. I, uh, it was a pack. It was a full flight, but like one person didn't show up. Wow. So I ended up getting, I think I had like a middle seat or something. I didn't. Yeah, who, who gives a damn at this yeah, point? Yeah, I don't, I don't care, yeah. bro. So I'm on the flight, and I'm like, and it was like the first time in like an hour and a half where I could just like chill. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm gonna just use this time to chill. And I was just like, wow, bro, like I'm really about to like be in the, in the come league, on, bro. bro. Come on, bro. You know come on, like, come I'm on. really about to. I'm really about to do this. So mm-hmm. then, um, I just remember it just being extremely grateful, but at the same time, it's like, yo, like I don't know what I'm gonna do tonight, but I'm gonna make some shake, bro. You Back. Know? So then, um, so I get it to L.A. and they had a. Uh, they had a coach there waiting for me, and they had like a nice little nice van, pick, mm. pick SUV style, picked us up. And while we were driving to LAX, by this time it's about one set of games at like seven. It's probably like maybe like four thirty or five o'clock. Okay, so they pick me up. They're showing me all the sets that they run, and uh, my boy Cinder Stormo was there. Okay, we yeah, played yeah, yeah. together at Oak Hill. Okay. So I was like, okay, cool. It's gonna be the first time me seeing Sin since Oak Hill. Like mm-hmm. that's my dog. And um, all right, so yeah, so we're on the way to the arena, they're showing me the plays, the sets. I'm like, okay, like they're keeping the, the um they're keeping the court spread, they're just moving the ball, cutting the kicking, da da da, all that stuff. So when I saw what they're running, my first instinct was like, okay, like there's obviously gonna be plays that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. But at the end of the day, just stay corner. Yeah, like no matter what, if I just stay corner, I know I'll be in the right spot because I'm because I'm spacing the floor. Facts, so facts. I, I might not know when to cut or anything like that, but you always need a corner man for the most part. Mm-hmm. For the, like nine times saying you always need a corner man unless it's like some, a designated play. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, like they can't be mad at me if I just stay corner. Yeah, you know, like that's what I would tell someone if he didn't know play just stay corner. Mm-hmm. So um, we get to we get to LAX. Pull up. I'm walking through like the little um little tunnel, and it was crazy. It was, like it was a Clipper game, but they had all Lakers stuff there, bro. Like, yeah, Kobe, Kobe face everywhere. I bet. I was just like, oh my god, this gotta be sick. <laughs> <laughs> you Clipper seeing L.A. Clippers everywhere, LA, Lakers. Just, got, just Kobe everywhere, bro. Yeah. So um yeah, so I'm walking through, and um I'm about to go inside the locker room, and then I meet and I see Doc Rivers. Wow. And then uh, the coach also he's like, "Yo, Doc, this is Ike just just flew in." And Doc was like, "All right, hey, you ready to play forty minutes tonight?" I was like, "Hell yeah!" He was like, "All right, it's good." <sighs> dab me up, and I <laughs> dab me up, and I walk into the locker room. Yeah, and then um, I'm changing. Then like, "Oh, Ike, you gotta do a heart um, heart test because mm-hmm. they had to like it's a base like a physical, make sure everything was good because if something to happen, they don't want to be liable and stuff like that, which makes sense." So then I uh, go into, like, this little weight room. They got, like, a few treadmills in there. I walk in. I see uh, Blake. Okay. And um, he sees I got Clipper stuff on. He's like, well, what's good, bro? I was like, what's up, bro? I'm Ike. He's like, nice to meet you. I'm Blake. And then went on, did my test. And then um, I saw Alice Caruso. And I know, I thing is, like, people, AC big now, but mm-hmm. I've known AC since... Uh, since 2015. Okay. I've known AC since about 2015. And he he he's my guy, real cool dude. And he was just like, Ike, what are you like, Ike, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. And I told him, I was like, bro, my agent called me, told me about this. And then I'm 
was here, bro. Like, I flew down, like, just from SAG. He's like, bro, what? And I was like, yes, I know. This is crazy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, go, I'm just going with it, bro. <laughs> like, don't ask me <laughs> no questions. Like, I'm legit just going with it. Thanks. So, uh, I'm going to say what's up to AC. I see DeAndre Jordan there, too, which is cool with them. Then, like, all right, all right now. And then, oh, and as I'm doing, this isn't just, like, a sit down like, put some things on your chest to check your heart. I had to, like, run, like, two miles on this Gosh, thing. damn. Yeah, so, mind you, I had a yoga workout. Yep. At 7 a.m. I was on the court at 9. I, to, I was on a flight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now I got to do this heart heart rate test. Bro, I'm I'm tired, bro. Man, I'm already knowing. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm not showing it. Because yeah, I'm yeah. just, like, I'm just in the moment. And I'm just like, ah, like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah. So then, um... So then go to the locker room. Like, all right, now we're going to take you to the court, have your own little warm-up and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, cool. So then I have my little warm-up. I'm just like, I'm going to tell myself, bro, it's just basketball. Bro. Just basketball. Yeah, like, you've been doing this your whole life. It's yeah. It's just hoops. Bro. Yeah. It's just hoops. So then, um, so do that. Go back to the locker room. This is before the game. And then I'm looking around. Okay, Blake's not playing. Andre's not playing. Mm -hmm. Austin Rivers isn't playing. Uh, Pat Bev isn't playing. Mm. Lou Will isn't playing. I'm like, oh, I'm about to play, bro. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I'm like, bro, there's only seven, eight players, bro. Like, I'm about to like, they gotta play me at some point. Like, Thanks. Even whether it's like the first half, second half, like at some point, I'm like, I'm touching the floor, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm checking in. I'm like, I might not start, but like, I'm about to get in this game. Yeah. So, um, so we get it. Right before we walk out, we do like a little huddle, and I'm standing next to Lou Will. He hits me on the chest and like, "Hey, my man, right here, flew in from sack, straight off the flight. Yo, let's make sure we show him love and um, we go out there and get this win, and uh, and so he can do his thing. Mm -hmm. And I like appreciate that because I was just like, wow, like, that means I mean, like he ain't had to do that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, so then yeah, so we go out there and uh, we in warm ups and then. Like my, I start to be like you get real excited, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like, bro, like I'm on that stage. It's kind of like the pro day. Like, mm -hmm. I like, bro, I, my legs, like they were tired before, but they good now, right? So then, um, so then warmth is cool. Game starts, and uh, I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, all right, like five minutes left in the first, like. P starting PG getting kind of tired. Mm -hmm. Even the two guard, cause my boy Tyrone Wallace was there too. Ty Wallace, yeah, yeah. So, I, so I knew a few guys on the team, and I'm like, yo, like, I'm like, okay, like this is gonna be around the time, cause like I said, we're only playing seven, eight players, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be around the time like, I gotta get in. So then, uh, here, Ike, check in, Ike, check in. I was like, bet. And I took off my little warm up shirt. Yeah. Checked in the game and then I didn't, bro. I didn't even have a my last name on the back. It was just the, it was the number. Yeah, it was just the number. Yeah, bro. it was just I didn't have my last name on the back, so I already knew like like people was gonna talk about me like regardless, <laughs> bro. Like yeah. like bro, who's this dude? I think I was like number seventeen. Like who's this dude number seventeen with no name? Like who is this guy? Yeah, like, yeah no yeah, name yeah. on his back, bro. And mind you, like, we're playing the Lakers, bro. Like this isn't no like this isn't like a small market team. This is the Lakers. Yes, you know what I'm saying. And they had just Lonzo didn't play that game, but they had just that was the year they had just drafted him. Right, 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 right. So it was like a lot of like noise and stuff like that, surrounded by that. But um, yeah, I just remember being there and I was just like I went up one I went up, I was on offense once, on mm -hmm. defense once, and then after that I was like, This is just hoops, bro. It's just like, basketball. Yeah. So man. I was like, yo, I'm here, bro. So um so I think uh I think my first positive play was I legit just had the like someone swung to me and I just and I swung it um to uh my boy Evans I, f I forgot his first name went to Oklahoma State mm -hmm. PG um uh uh Turner no 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 that that, that, Keenan? that not, not even Turner Keenan. um um yeah we bad with names today but yeah Terrible my boy man. Evans so kick it up to him bro and I remember Doc saying oh good play Ike no I was like alright like. I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. Facts, facts. And then the next time I had I had a ball screen. Mm -hmm. They iced it. Okay, okay. So then I I rejected it. So now I just had oh, it was me and Julius Randle. Okay. So I had space. And I was like, yo, this dude tall as shit, bro. Like, yeah. Like, cause um, 
it was who they playing? Jordan Clarkson, Julius Randle. Uh, AC had to be playing. AC for, was for sure playing. Yeah. Brandon Ingram. Oh, Carwell Pope. Yeah. Uh, I think Rondo was on that team. Who? I think Rondo was randomly on that team. No, nah, he wasn't there when I was when I was there. He might have been on later in the season. Yeah, but he wasn't there. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Zubac, I think. Yeah, Zubac was a rookie. Kuz was there, and yep. uh, who else was there? That's like right before Bron got there. Yeah, yeah. Ingram, Ingram too. And yeah, bro, he guarded me one time, and then he put his he just like put his wingspan out there. He just put just that made no sense. Bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like creative player type. Yeah, shit. creative player for real. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so back to the to the action. Yeah, so I rejected the ball screen. I had space between Julius Randle, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just shoot this floater real quick. So I just shot the floater, and then cashed it. Boom! Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, like this this is cool. So then next time down, um. We're on defense. Mm. I'm guarding uh, Clarkson off a of ball screen. Okay. And uh, like I kind of got caught. Like, it was kind of weird. Like, we both somehow low-key got caught in the mm-hmm. ball screen. Like, like I was trying to fight through, but I think his arm was, like, in the way and got stuck. So, he was caught, too. So, I kind of, like, poked the ball from, from behind. You know mm-hmm. how people, like, yeah, look, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So, I did that. Uh, got the ball loose and uh, ended up getting a wide-open lay. And um, so then, so then a few plays down after that, um, and as I'm doing this, like the whole Clippers, like all the, like the whole team is just like hyping me up like crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just gassing me like Austin was going crazy. Everyone's just like, oh yeah, do you think Lou will shout me out? All that stuff. That's so yeah, it was, it was wild, bro. It was a wild time. So then, um, so then I remember this. So vividly, bro. Um, dude, Tyrone had got a steal. Okay. Right? And the thing about Tyrone, Tyrone's right-handed, but as soon as he gets close to the basket, he likes to finish with his left. I just, Interesting. I've, I played against Tyrone, like, for three years, uh, being in the pack. So Max, I just, I just, I just, Cal. I just, Cal, so yeah. I just knew this about him, that he loves finishing with his left. So he's he's uh he's on the break and he was like kind of in the middle between two guys. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, he's coming. That's gonna be a tough, tough finish. So yeah. I'm, I'm like trailing it. I'm just like I'm kind of like cutting through guys. I'm like, yo, if I time this correct, like if it comes off, I I might be able to get one. Yeah, get a tip done. So um, Tyrone had like done some little funny where like he kind of like double pumped, kind of twisted in the air mm-hmm. and kind of put try to put it up there soft and. I see it and I'm like, this is it. So then when it came off, I was like, yeah, like it came off too. I like, couldn't have come, come came off the rim like perfect, yeah, per- more perfectly. But yeah. like it was um, yeah, I just got it and I dunked it, and then I just <laughs> for me it was like it was regular, bro. Like people know I got, people that know me got bounced, but none of them right. knew me. So yeah. they just like, oh, who's this six two six three dude dunking like this? So then I just caught the tip dunk and um. I just remember the crowd I was like, oh, yo. <laughs> I just remember just like, remember the pro day, just shh, yeah, shh, people just talking. I remember hearing that. And I'm walking down, and then um, timeout happened. People were dapping me up, and I'm just like, yeah, like, it is what it is. In my head, I'm like, yo, like, like at the same time, I'm so in the moment. Like, I'm not really realizing what I like, what's going on. Mm-hmm. But, um, but like afterwards, I was like, "Bro, what did I just do, bro?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So then that happened, and then go into the that was that was all actually. I'm pretty sure that was all in the second quarter because I, I think know, so. Because you know what, I didn't I didn't play the first quarter. Okay. So I think that was all in like a span of like legit like four to five four to five minutes. Bro. Yeah. Just boom, boom, boom. You know, and um. What else had happened? So, yeah, so end of the first half happens, go into the locker room, people pat me on the back and say, yo, great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, like, I'm trying to win this game, bro. Like, we yeah. was down two. I was like, yeah, I appreciate all that, but, like, game ain't over. I'm trying to win this game. Hell, yeah. And so, mind you, bro, uh, Doc was like, yeah, get ready to play 40, da-da-da, all that stuff. Start the third quarter. Um, I remember I, had, I was open for a three. Mm-hmm. But one thing people don't tell you about the NBA or to jump from the college to the NBA is how deep that league three is. 
the the two wings are the furthest shot. Yeah, the two wings are the first shot. But I'm just telling you, just in general, facts, like, facts. Because that was something I was that the the difference was crazy. Because I was shooting the three cool my senior year. I watched him stay. I'm pretty sure I shot like 38, 39 mm-hmm. percent, something like that. Yeah. But I just remember going um, into just seeing that. At Stableson, I was like, yo, this is far. This is far, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't attempt any threes. And for one, my legs were shot. Mm-hmm. But halfway through the third, like, like my legs were done. It was bro. done, though. It, it was finished. Yeah. Was finished. Yeah. So I played good. I made some positive plays um, my uh, in that third quarter. But, um, and then Doc was like, yo, Ike, like, get a quick one. You're going back in and finish the game. Like, yeah, I, like, I bet. Like, it's, I'm with whatever, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, cool, it's cool. It's good. Come on now. And then, um, then I didn't end up going back in. <laughs> so, oh, did he not? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, bro. I ain't go. I ain't end up going back in. My legs were, bro. My legs were shot. Um, we ended up losing by like two points. Mm-hmm. But it was like, bro. Like I said, they. Bro, they were playing like a lot of people. Like Brooke Lopez was playing. Like mm-hmm. all the guys I named earlier, they were all playing. And we only played like seven, eight people, bro. Yeah. You know, so like the whole like everyone was like rooting for us and stuff. And um it was like a crazy experience. And then after I like, had a lot of cameras in my face asking me like what my day was like, like what this experience was. Mm-hmm. Doc was telling me but Doc had talked about me in his post game um interview, stuff like that. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, bro, for that, and the thing about it, bro, like, I got back from the locker room, I couldn't use my phone for, like, 20 minutes. Why not? Uh, my, my phone was just, like, going just off. buzzing, just like this, bro, for 20, for 20 minutes. I couldn't use it. Like, I'm trying to type, like, I'm trying to Gosh. swipe away at the top and stuff. I, like, I legit couldn't use my phone, bro. It was going that insane. Gosh, I imagine. Bro, I mean, you on, you on national television. Bro, thing, it was a TNT game. Gosh, man, that's it was a TNT game, bro. So, man, for first of all, uh, hell of a story. Yeah. Wow, um, that that's that's like a, a a dream come true type of story. Yeah, because yeah, we have aspirations of playing in the league. Yeah, and that is purely amazing. And another thing um, that we, as a fan, I noticed watching the game was when you got that tip dunk. I seen Blake Griffin's reaction. Yeah. Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, they were like, yo, sit up. And I was like, that is freaking dope. Yeah. And yeah, no, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's probably inspiring. You see without even knowing it. Like, you saw it like, oh, bro, my, my big bro in the L right now. Like, what mm-hmm. are we, like, what are we really talking about? Yeah. And, um, so when you got the jersey with no name, didn't they eventually put the name on it at the end or no? no bro, I took the jersey. Like, like I took the, at the, in the locker room, I, Took the jersey off, stuffed it in my bag, bro. I, I would have done the same thing with yeah, you. That's, a, like, that's like a keep, prime souvenir yeah, right keeping, there. Keeping this. Keeping what was this. what was your uh, stat line in that game? Like seven points something? It's seven points, maybe like one or two assists, maybe like one or two rebounds. I always sneak in like rebounds I always forget about. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I yeah. think like one or two rebounds. But I think only played like – I think only played like – 10 minutes 10 or 11 minutes bro right, efficient minutes yeah man. but it was it was a loud it was loud though so yeah it was yeah it's like that's yeah it was, that's it, was, it was a wild time but i remember those next two days like i've like people always kept asking me about it yeah like for the next like month after that and i just tell them like, like exactly how i'm telling you but um it was a yeah that was a crazy moment sometimes um sometimes i'm not i'm gonna say i forget about that yeah but I don't want that to be, like, the highlight mm-hmm. of, like, my basketball career. Oh, yeah, no, crazy. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. So um, there'll be times where, like, I kind of forget that I even happened. Yeah. You know, just so I can kind of just move past it and create new memories and stuff like that. Because you never want to be stuck in the past. Hell, you know? yeah. And I kind of saw that quick um, after that, well, how... Uh, how crazy how, cuz it it is a it is a truly interesting story bro like bro. crazy like one of a kind ran like, the most random story like for all that to happen and then I come in and I play well like you know what I'm saying like I like last minute I got to find I got to find a way to get on the flight yeah they're showing me the film playing with guys I've luckily I played with two of them before but mm. playing a whole new system I really don't know playing for a hall of fame coach 
playing in one playing in the biggest city in the country, mm-hmm. like in probably the one of the best arenas in the world. Staples Center before now it's Crypto.com. Right yeah, here, crypto, yeah, but it was just uh, it was just wild, bro. Like when you really insane. when you really just wanna like, cause there are a few times when. I break down what happened. Yeah. But, like, right now, when you really, like, break it down, how, how I'm breaking it down to you, it's just, like... That's not well, that's not, that's not supposed to happen. That's yeah, not, that's you know, not like, like, a normal on, thing. Bro. That's, like, a real blessing. And just, a real, just a real blessing, bro. So, but at the same time, it was, like, real motivation. Because I was just, like, bro, like... Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the day, it's just basketball, bro. It's just basketball, man. Like, if you, if, you, if you just... If you just put your head down and just go at dudes... Yeah. And the best, your best is yet to come, bro. Cause, yeah. like, don't don't be, and you don't play scary, bro. Like, you're gonna be straight. And that's yeah, that's that's a true testament. Just being confident, yeah. playing your game, and no matter the circumstances, no matter how bright the lights are, at the end yeah, of the day, bro. it is the one motto that remains is put that brown thing in that round thing. <laughs> 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 hey, crazy. as long as you do that, man, you're good to go, man. Um, oh well, one last thing on the kind of basketball tip before we get to the lighthearted topics and um, finish finish the this this amazing talk. Um, then you go to was it Jerusalem, Israel, Israel, yeah, Israel. right. So, well, this is first of all, you play G League, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about more of the overseas game because mm-hmm. this past season. You got the All Star Game MVP, yeah, and and that was in which league was that? That was in the top league in Israel. Top league in Israel, All Star Game MVP, and then did you make first or second team? All man, honestly, bro, or how'd that work? I ain't even. So the team I was on, right, we were mm-hmm. picked to be last in the league. Wow, picked okay. to be last, right? But this was the first. This was actually the first time where like a team's letting me like just play to one. Like let me be true like one. true yeah. one, yeah. right? So like, all right, like I'm gonna make it work. End up finishing top five in the league. Out, out of how many? Out of I think twelve or thirteen. Oh, that's that's plus. That's, you know, you know that's, that's playoffs. Yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah, we made the playoffs for sure. We ended up losing to the people who ended up eventually winning the whole chip. Okay, was, like if you won't lose, lose to the, the chance, baby, lose to the champs. Come on. You know what Come I'm saying? On. So, um, so yeah, so we were picked to be last, and then. I ended up like really killing, having a good year. I'm pretty sure I averaged like fourteen, four and four. That's solid. And for those of you that don't know, like, like ten points overseas is a lot. It's more physical. It's it's more yeah, it's more physical and it's a lot slower. Mm, okay. You know, because you don't see too many people averaging twenty points overseas. Yeah, yeah. Like that usually won't happen because if you're averaging twenty. Then usually your team's not doing all that great. <laughs> yeah. No, legit. Yeah, yeah. Legit, bro. So um so yeah, I ended up averaging fourteen four four and my team played well. And I think that year I probably hit like maybe like five or six like clutch buckets to like mm-hmm. either win the game or it was a it was the bucket that put us up to win the game mm-hmm. like maybe the other team might have like they could have scored da, 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 but um like i hit five or six that was like deciding factors that, and helped us like make sure that we won the game yeah 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 so i was a big part of the team um it was great um it was something like i knew i could do it was just like kind of the opportunity i just need the opportunity to show that like, yo like just let me let me be the point guard for real mm-hmm. like have my back like if I mess up, it's okay, and now I'll go out there and do my thing and yeah. make sure that we win. And I did that, you know. So um, I still I didn't end up getting first or second team, and they still got me a lot. They really got me messed up on that. Yeah, because like, I'm just like, because I because for me I'm not like I don't want to make it about me, mm-hmm. but I like to just call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. keep it real. And I because if I don't hit if I don't hit those five to six clutch buckets, then like team could because if you're a lot usually how it works overseas if your team is last place you usually go down the league oh shit You'll go down to like the the second division yeah 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 like that. but um so i'm like in my eyes if i don't hit those closet buckets like there's a chance the team could have the organization could have went down mm-hmm. into the second division so honestly in my heart of hearts i felt like 
when you look at like MVPs. Yeah. Like, cause I didn't get MVP, um, but I felt like my name at least should have been in there because, to me, I was the most valuable player. Mm-hmm. Like to a team that that no one expected to do anything for us to do to make it to the playoffs. I feel like I was the most valuable player. Um, it should have for sure been considered for the MVP, but. Yeah. You know, it, things happen. It is what it is. Um, I'm not losing sleep over it. Yeah. You know, I'm on to the next one. Just excited about my of what I'm about to do in Italy. So hell yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just keeping it pushing, really. And to to just elaborate uh, on on a on a kind of adding to what you're saying, life overseas isn't what a lot of people think it is, especially playing basketball. Yeah. Um, it's. Not in in most cases, it's not always luxurious. It's not always the glitz and glam. But sometimes no. it's kind of like a junior college experience, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, give me one experience for you, like, cause you've been all over the world. Um, you knew you good, man. That's, that's a that's a money call. If you didn't know, when the when the long was <laughs> off middle of the day, that means you gotta go get your damn money. Uh, but you've been all over the world, travel with basketball. What, mm-hmm. What's one experience to you that really stood out and was like, wow, this is I'm literally in a different country different culture um when i went to germany my first year being overseas i went to germany okay it was 18 2018 2019 yeah crazy time bro <laughs> my team we weren't all that good mm-hmm. coach was crazy okay like crazier than the franklin coach oh no so crazy. gosh damn and uh it was cold out there. I was in a small city. And thing was, with my team then, we had three guys that were like 38 to 40, right? And our coach. God, I mean, okay, well, yeah. Yeah, they're old. They're, they're old. He's old as hell. And my coach, he was uh, he was 35. Okay. So he was younger than the players. Yeah. So um, overseas, you can't have... You could and well in Germany at the time you could only have six imported players. So you could so basically six American guys, six people that weren't German, right? Mm-hmm. And um, for some reason, our team decided to sign seven of them. Okay, I don't know what that. I don't know why, but they only signed seven, but only six can play, mm-hmm. right? So during one of our preseason games, one of our Americans hurt his ankle really bad. My yeah. boy Jamar, he hurt his ankle really bad, and he was out for maybe about. Two to three months. Uh-huh. So, um, so we only had six. So everyone's all the everyone else is playing stuff like that. I was trying to figure things out because the coach had a weird system. Like he always wanted us to run a play. Like mm-hmm. no matter what, run a play. And I'm just like, like there's there's no like freedom. It was mm-hmm. really no freedom. It was kind of like on some robotics type of time. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up playing like somewhat cool. But he was like kind of really wasn't letting me like go like that. Mm-hmm. And I at the time I was averaging like eleven points and it was something crazy. I was averaging like eleven points in like fourteen minutes, bro. Damn. Yeah, it was something like crazy. Bro, yeah. You know. And then, um, so I, my guy Jamar comes back, and the coach comes up to me. Who's like, "Hey, Ike, like, I just want now we have now we have seven mm-hmm. import guys. So one of us has to sit." So he comes up to me and like, hey, Ike, um, I just want to let you know um, I'm going to decide to sit you. I don't know when the next time you're going to play. If someone else, if one of the Americans were to get hurt, um, we'll play you. But after that, like, nah, like, you're, not, fu- you're not going to play. And his reason for it was because in my head, I'm like, bro, I'm averaging like 11 points, yeah. like 13, 14 minutes, like yeah. crazy efficient. He was just like, honestly, like, you're the youngest on the team. So I f- feel like it's, like, out of all the guys that sit, like, because you're the youngest, it should be you. That's crazy. And I was just like, what? I was like, what? Like, but like I said, he was 35. The older guys, on OGs on the team, they were, everyone was cool on the team, too. Like, I loved all my teammates there. Mm-hmm. Um, we just didn't have the best season, so... um. Yeah, so they he wasn't gonna sit them because they've been in the league for so long. They're legends in the league and stuff like that. So yeah. he wasn't gonna sit them. So he just felt that since I was the youngest, I'm not gonna play. So it was kind of a sense of um, 
Respect your elders, no matter how good you are. Bro, if you're youngest, you're sitting down. I, know, I didn't understand that at all, you know. So um, yeah. So yeah. So but the thing was about it was the GM of the team loved me. The fans they loved me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it just came to a point where I was like, yeah, I was like, I just got to get out of here, bro. Like this is not it. So then um, I ended up leaving there to go play in Lithuania from end of January to May uh-huh. of 2019. Yeah. And um, it was cool. I was on a good team, cool coach. City. The only thing was the city was bad. Yeah. Like, the city was trash. Yeah. Basketball wise, everything was great. We had a cool system. We ran normal plays, like horns, double pin down. Oh, simple shit. Simple stuff yeah. like like qu- a quick action. Like it was like the actions we were running were really like what for me. Like not not for like for me personally, but for a style of play that I'd like to play. It was like that style, you know. Yeah. We ended up playing well. We ended up losing to a Euroleague team in the playoffs, um, Zagreus. Okay. And um, uh, and then after that, I went home. But, yeah, just being there, I was it was, like, real isolated. There was a lot of – I remember that year. It was just a lot of alone time that year. I bet. It was a tremendous amount of alone time, bro. But, um, yeah, going through that, it was kind of like – uh, it was in a situation that I really couldn't do nothing about it, mm. especially in Germany, you know, like, yeah, thir- 11 points in 13, 14 minutes. That's almost a point a minute. I'm like. saying, so you play double that, you might get double that. I'm just, you know what I mean? Hey, it's, it's, it's basic, basic mathematics. Man, I, hey, the math was mathing, bro, but <laughs> it wasn't for some people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> math wasn't mathing for my dude, so. Man. Um, yeah, it is what it was. He ended up getting, coach ended up getting fired at the end of the year. Would you look at that? Would you look man, at that? Hey, man, just, yeah. I, don't, I don't wish bad on nobody. Just see things for what, for what happened, you know? So I just kept doing my thing, kept working, and yeah. it was cool. Man, um, yeah, wow, that, that that's actually crazy because I couldn't imagine somebody telling me to sit my ass down and and I and I and, I, and I'm giving buckets. Yeah, hi, right. okay, you know what? I'm I'm about to call your ones out. You know, <laughs> saying check check rock or something. But uh, no, nah, that's that's a great way you handled it, man. You know, sometimes you gotta be the mature one in the situation a lot of the yeah, time. For and sure, yeah. Like I said, a lot of overseas stuff ain't always about the glitz and glam. Definitely but not. we talked about. Man, Damien, your whole career almost, I feel like. Oh, like shit. But, like, we didn't even get into the bulk of the steal the full career. But what I do want to do now, I just – I have a portion on my channel where we kind of um, pick your – how you say, Trio? Trio? Your mental capability? Yeah. All right. Mental capability. Yeah, so we're going to ask you some 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 trick questions here. I bet. Um, now, now, granted, if you, if you get these right, we're, we're going to get some new ones anyway. Um, but a lot of people have been getting them right, so the pressure's on you. Okay. So, um – we're going to start with the orange question. All right. There's a bag of eight oranges, mm-hmm. and you take two. How many mm-hmm. do you have? There's a bag of eight oranges, and mm-hmm. I take two? I mm-hmm. got two. Gosh, damn it. See, there's there's no delivery there, Trio. There's there's no delivery there. I don't know what else to do. All right. Um, Which one? Which one? Should we go for the, the deli? All right. The, there's a deli worker. Deli worker. Six feet tall. Six feet tall, yeah. Wears a size 10 shoe. Okay. What does the deli worker weigh? Deli worker is six feet tall with a size 10 shoe. Mm-hmm. What does he weigh? Who knows? Oh, no, no, no. This is the answer. Yeah, yeah, we know. You know the answer? The deli worker six feet tall with mm-hmm. a size 10 shoe. How much does the deli work away? I don't know. What does the deli work away? What does he wear? It's a it's a it's a male. It is a male. It is it's a male. Uh, um, male six feet tall, size ten. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say six feet. You see, wearing six feet. Mm-hmm. You see, wears like an eleven. Break it down. Yep. Say one sixty. That's funny answer. Yeah. <clears throat> Should repeat the question again and then tell them the answer. It's a deli worker. This is a deli worker. That's six feet tall. Was a size ten shoe. What does a deli worker weigh? He weighs meat. <laughs> Pause. Pause for show. Jesus. But, but the, deli, the deli worker weighs oh, meat. Oh my! Oh, she was. I got you. I yeah. got you. I got okay. you. Okay. So, 
right. people, people getting that right? Actually, yeah, I think uh, Zeb got that right. Um, Noble actually got no. I think Noble or Dallas got that right. Uh, UC got that right. Oh, he did. Um, UC got the first one right too. I think UC went four for five. Okay, so now let's let's get one more in here. Um, which one should we do? Should we go? Oh, I mean, I want I want to get a good one. Let's go. Okay. Heavy hitter. <laughs> Mike, what weighs more? 10 pounds of stone or 10 pounds of brick? 10 pounds of stone or 10 pounds of brick? Mm-hmm. The same thing. Because they're 10 pounds. Shit, do we have? I feel, like, I feel like we almost had him. I feel like we almost <laughs> had him. And he started thinking. I said, wait a yeah, minute. You can't, can't, can't answer too fast with these. You got to put some time on, but they 10 pounds. The yeah. only person we got with that question out of all the guests is Jordan Ford. Oh, yeah? He sat here. I told him, what weighs heavier, one pound of cotton, one pound of stone? He said, one pound of cotton, stone. He answered stone four times. And I kept telling him, one pound of stone and one pound of cotton. He's like, you're trying to trick me. It's stone. <laughs> 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 Couldn't believe it. No, you did. He went two for three. Yeah. That's sixty percent, man. Solid, that's that's psh, res- always gonna be efficient, bro. Got my respect. Um, now, now, lastly, you know, I want to ask you uh, uh, two questions: mm-hmm. serious one and a kind of a funny one. Right. Which one you want first? I think the serious one, ma'am. Going through your trials and tribulations, mm-hmm. how did you keep the just keep going mentality? Great question, bro. Yeah. And then, you know, if you want to answer, you know, lock in on your camera if you want to answer that too. That's you guess yours right there. Right. Yeah. All right. Origin story for the Just Keep Going. Okay. Origin story. All right. So, you know my pops, bro. Yeah. Cool ATM. Dude. ATM, bro. <laughs> that's, another, that's another story. We don't got time for that. that yeah. Though. For another day. But, um, at least for part two. Mm-hmm. So, my dad, when we were younger, my dad, for those that don't know my dad, um, great guy, take care of everybody. Mm-hmm. I see everyone doing well. Um, my dad grew up in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. It's tough out there. It's like a lot of people would say it's like tougher to come out the hood than it is. No, it's tougher to come out of Nigeria than it is in the hood I out bet. here. You I know bet. What I'm saying so. Real tough, and for my dad to make himself to what he is now, I from growing up there. Uh, True real, legend. Yeah, True real, legend. real legend, bro. My yeah. dad's a legend for real, literally. So, um, my dad when we were kids. He'd always be like, yo, he always look, me, Chooks, and you see and I, like, yo, if you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Mm-hmm. And, like, we'd be driving somewhere. He'd be like, if you don't succeed, what do you do? And then we'd always <laughs> be like, at the same time, try, try, try again. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm just chilling. I could just be chilling watching TV. My dad come up to me. He's like, hey. <laughs> he do be doing that yeah. little knee tag. He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like hey. You don't succeed, try, try, try again. He just, like, instilled this mm-hmm. in me when I was, like, so young, bro. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't succeed, try, try, try again. So, like, the just keep going has been, like, it's been in my DNA since, like, it's just always been in my DNA because yeah. of my dad and my parents and what they always tell me. Like, you always got to continue to persevere no matter how hard things get. Like, yeah. just do your best. So, um, so, like, I'm going through all this. Like, I'm going... With, like I'm playing with the Clippers and then I play in the G League and then um I had I don't play all that great at the summer league with the Kings mm-hmm. and then I go overseas overseas really wasn't like that um I did end up still playing somewhat decent I come back I'm like you know what I'm gonna go to the G League route uh back to the G League I go to DC mm-hmm. um my situation in DC was a little funny like mm-hmm. I was told one thing they just did another. Um, but I ended up starting playing well. Boom, COVID happens. Yeah. And then um and then I try like everyone's just figuring trying to figure things out. Still working out, still staying in shape, make sure my skills are still sharp. Yeah. Then uh go to go back to Germany and this time was kinda like the same thing. Wasn't wasn't all that great. Ended up going to France, end up killing it in France. And um uh, I had skipped. I skipped a part. So during COVID, right, mm-hmm. I went on vacation. Um, I'm not gonna say who, 
if I went on vacation, there are these guys are in the NBA that we went on vacation with. And um, one oh, I remember that yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah, you were yeah. supposed to be. You were supposed yeah. to be there. You. Were I, supposed I, to I be remember there. this trip very you were well. To be there. So yeah. yeah, we go on that trip, and one of the guys, um, should I just say the name? No, no, I mean, I mean, I can't, I can't. It's really not that. It's really not that. Deep. I'm trying to be like, it's really not that deep. Right? <laughs> no, no, really think about it. It's really okay. Okay, yeah, go ahead. It's really yeah. Not that deep. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's really not that deep. Um, my boy uh, C Woods. Yeah, yeah, C yeah. Woods was there yeah. with, with us and DJ, and this was uh, so C Woods had just got done playing with. He was the in Houston. Pistons. Oh, Pistons. That's right. I think, I think right. he Pistons, had just Pistons, got done with Pistons. the Pistons. Yep, and he was playing. He played like a few games with the Rockets. I'm I pretty sure he so. got traded at the end of the season. I believe so. And then he finished out the season, but he was he cooked. Yeah. And people were like, yo, like, watch out for C. Woods. C. Yeah. Woods is coming. So, um, and I remember hearing a story about C. Woods, about how he got cut when he was in China and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I just asked him. And during this whole time, like, I'm telling myself, like, yo, like, no matter what, like, don't stop. Just keep going. Just keep going. No matter what happens, mm-hmm. like, Coach don't like you for some odd reason. Just keep going, or yeah. like, even if you don't play well in one setting, just keep going. You're gonna be straight. You're gonna be straight. I'm telling myself this, like, like I'm hardwiring my brain to think like this, you know. Mm. So um, I get to see, and uh, then we get to uh, on vacation with C Woods and DJ, and uh, I asked C Woods, I was like, yo, I was like, yo, would you like, what are you telling yourself during these times, bro? Like, what, like. Like what like kept you moving forward and stuff? He's like, bro, I just I legit just kept going, bro. So he said that word for word. He's like, bro, I legit just kept going, bro. Like yeah. I just didn't stop. Yeah. And the thing was, um, it was kind of, it was kind of cool for him to say that because, um, because like when you hear stories like that, that kind of inspire you. So it was for me. It was really, like, my like my inspiration like. Things that inspire me are telling me the same things I'm telling myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so I knew mm-hmm. I was on like the right path of where I was going with with yeah. this and stuff like that. And just keep going is something that like can resonate with everybody. You don't have to be Thanks. an athlete. You don't have to be a hooper. Thanks. You can be like my dad. Like my dad, he's a lawyer. You know, he made it out of Nigeria. He just kept going. Like, like my dad, he um he didn't pass the bar until his third time. Yeah. You know, and my him and my uncle, they were real close. Um, they were studying for the bar at the same time. My my uncle passed on his first time, mm-hmm. and it's like it's kind of like most people like they'd fold at that, you know. My dad he just kept going, and he ended up passing on his third on his third time, and he really like his life kind of took off after that. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, with all, with all these trials and tribulations, I just tell myself to just keep going because. Like now we just we came too far to stop. Like I bet with your with um your situation, like like who would have thought you'd be yeah you'd be just right. doing this podcast? Like bro, like I tell Cell, I tell for those of you that don't know me, like Cell, he really best friends with my younger brother. You see, so I've watched yeah. you from afar and yeah. stuff like that. We just had this talk maybe like a week ago. Yeah, we was in the car. In the car, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, Cell, like for me, was the guy. He was the kid who, like, they weren't. You guys weren't getting like the YAF mixes. <laughs> no, no. So Cell was like, nah, I'm gonna just make my own. I'm Literally. Like, for me and the homies, I'm gonna just make our own mixes. Like, we're gonna be straight. So then I thought that was super dope. You know, it's like, yo, like, you're gonna get it hot, get out the mud and just do it yourself. So I Fact. thought that was super cool. Fact. And then, um, like, you could have, you could have stopped along the way. Things got tough. Like, no one ain't, no one teach, no one taught you how to make a mixtape. Come on, bro. How to cut up the film. Come on, bro. You know, like, I bet there's challenging times. You looking at the computer, stuff like that. And mind you, you're doing this with all with school and hoop, yep. trying to get better, and uh, things are tough. But like you just kept going, and now like I'm right here. You guys probably can't see, but I'm looking at uh, Marcel's ha- presented to Marcel's house for passing a million subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what I'm saying, like, yeah. You, see, you just keep going, and you know you you really never know what could happen from it. You know, so it's real, man. That's where JKG um, comes from. It's just like never stop. Um, Always continue to put your best foot forward. And it's kind of funny, like, the more I've been saying it, like, the more people, like, just seeing how much it resonates with everybody, yeah. you know? And at some point, it doesn't matter what level you at, whether you're Braun, uh, Giannis, Kobe, um, 
Rest in peace of Kobe. Um, mm, but agree. any like anybody in any situation, are you going after a goal? You going there's gonna be some trials and tribulations. It's fact. It's Just because there's trials and tribulations, I mean, you gotta stop. So. Um, <laughs> Preach. Yeah, bro. So that's what just keep going means, dog, and that's where it came from. Well, man, usually we end the episode when I tell you to lock in and give advice, but you pretty much did all that in <laughs> one. So, like I said, that did the job for me. Gotcha. Um, so I'm gonna ask you the more funnier question. Uh, um, right. This is kind of personal to you. Yeah. Well, not personal, but this is this is a Ike question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it has come to my attention um, that. I was talking to UC, and he's like, yeah, bro, he confirmed it. Because he kind of told me, uh, is it true that you don't have any dance rhythm? I don't have any dance rhythm? Yes. No, I used to not have dance rhythm. Okay, cause I, cause I, so I want to I wanna pause right there. So when he said that, it was because it was graduation. He's like, yeah, bro, we're going to come out and do a dance. He's like, bro, just watch Ike. Bro, so. yeah, nah. It's because, bro, the thing about it, bro, like, I'm my thing about that... <laughs> It really make me tight because I told my mom, I was like, bro, like, I'm not dancing, bro. Like, I don't want to dance. Especially back then, it was bad. It's gotten a lot, it's gotten a lot better no, it since. Has. I, I just saw you yeah. at, the, at, the, uh, at your mom's birthday yeah, party. Yeah, it's gotten a lot better since that. But back then, because I was like, I was just, I wasn't dancing, bro. Like, yeah. I, I just, there were songs I liked, but I wasn't dancing or nothing. Like, you just kind of just like, I was just moving side yeah. to side and shit like that, whatever. But yeah, back then, especially at UC graduation, bro. Yeah, UC yeah, graduation, man. he said, bro, just watch it Ike. Was bad, bro, it was bad. I didn't want to do it, but <laughs> I did it. Went through that. I told my mom, like, I don't care what happens, but parties, I'm not doing no traditional dances, no yeah. more. Yeah, it's, it's like finitos over with. <laughs> I don't. I, I told her I don't care what it is. I'm not doing it. Yeah, but yeah, now, now, I still not, still not doing it. But now, it's like, way better. Yeah, There's like nine days. Yeah, it's nine days for sure. Day for sure. But yeah, I said to ask you that because yeah, that's bro. always like I was like, bro. And, I, and I was so things? I was so mad at my nah, I was so mad at my mom because she knew like I was just like mom like like I never said it but I was like mom I can't dance like why are you trying to make like you gonna make me look stupid in front of everybody oh like God. like now people are gonna like laugh at me is that really what you want people to laugh at me no. Nah, <laughs> Bro, I was, nah, this is for real, bro. I was like 18. I know, I, I know it's 18, real. 19, like, it's, bro. It was like, that yeah. really like, like hurt, bro. I was just like, because it was cool because like I would just go off to where I was at at the time. But I was like, mom, like, these are my friends and family, bro. Like, yeah, facts. Like, you really trying to embarrass me in front of all of them, bro. No, nah, but you know, but like I said, that's that's just a good laugh because yeah, that that, exactly. that was literally uh, eight years ago, and I yeah. remember having that conversation. And I seen him literally a week and a half ago, your mom's birthday. I said, "Oh, I said, I said, said he's been working on that." I yeah, said, okay. I've been working on it. Yeah, I even told you, said, I said, I said, hold on. I say, I was like, I got the rhythm, but he's like, you know, what I'm saying he's been working on it a little bit. Yeah, bro, I got a little rhythm now, so it's cool. But yeah, yeah. back then, bro, it was not it. It was not it. I don't know where Chooks and UC where they got it from. Where they was doing, especially but, UC. Yeah, like, UC, UC, UC got gigs for sure. But me, I had to really like. Had to work it's at your just, craft it, yeah, it bit. just it took me a little long longer. I just kept going. Come on you now, just, come on, JKG, JKG. Man, come on. You know, you know <laughs> man, this has been uh, an amazing conversation. Wow, um, you know, sometimes going into podcast episodes, I don't know what to expect, and this one I honestly didn't know what to expect because we never had a chance to really talk, yeah. like deep deep into certain things outside of what we talk about in the car. Usually, it's always on the surface. We're like in the house joking around, talking yeah. about stuff that's going on in the world or social media. But getting to learn more about your story, more about you, and pick your brain a little bit, and to understand why you move, how you move, and how you move, how you move, and it's it kind of gives me a better understanding of who Ike is, and I appreciate you for letting yourself be vulnerable in the state yeah. of answering any question and talking about all situations in detail. Man, that is a talent that not a lot of people have, um, and it's sometimes hard for people to talk about. And you yeah. kind of opened up and flowed, and you know you did you did man. This is this is. An amazing episode right appreciate here, man. It, bro. Thank um, you. Yeah, I said I appreciate you pulling up once again. Um, this has been, yeah, one of those ones. <laughs> and if you watch it on YouTube, make sure you like, share, subscribe. For sure. Turn the post notices on. If you're listening on all the audio platforms, hit that follow button and stay tuned for more episodes. And yeah, well, there's only one way to end this um, episode, and I ended on how I ended on all my reaction videos. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you a question. It's just a trivia question. Mm -hmm. Do you know what two words I say at the end of every reaction vid and before every reaction vid? Nah, you just start. You just start doing them though. Okay, okay. Respect, respect, yeah, respect. Just, I don't, but you yeah. just start. And the thing is, I, 
me personally, I really don't watch reaction Next, videos. Bro, yeah, uh, bro. <laughs> so only so if you feel better, only one person has gotten this right. Yeah, okay. okay. And it was Dallas. It was Dallas. So it was my uh, girl's 14-year-old sister. Okay. That and, and all the guests are like, yeah. no, no one's got it right besides her. So yeah, okay. it, it, I'm not I'm taking it personal. But we're going to say you dig, you dig on okay. three. <laughs> and that's how we're going to end it. Got you. It's one hell of an episode. <sighs> Let's do it. One, two, three. You, you dig. dig. Hell yeah. <laughs>